Good evening and welcome to Girlfriend Minute. I am Char. And I'm Pascal. How are you this evening? I'm good. How are you? I know you're looking at the screen like what is happening because I can see it too. You can see it too, so it's different. Yes, it is okay. a little different. I think we got a new upgraded Skype. So oh. I think that's what's happening. I know I had to upgrade mine yesterday, I believe. Okay, so my stuff, I think... I don't know. Upgrades when I'm not here. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> no idea. It does it automatically. Unfortunately, I mean, mine does. Yeah, it must be on some kind of auto thing because, yeah, I'm sitting here looking at it going, it's not up here, but yet, oh, it's here. And yeah. we are recording. So we are recording. Good evening, my friend. How are you this evening? I'm doing great. How are you? I'm pretty good. Thank you. Just kind of yeah. chilling. I like yeah. my chill nights. I love your chill nights too. I wish I could go with you. <laughs> you got to get those fancy Grinch pants and then we're good to go. <laughs> oh my God, I'm so getting them. One for you, one for me. I know you already have some and they look really good on you and I love them. But I'm going to also get you another pair and then yeah. you can wear them at the same time. We're going to do matchy matchy. We are going to do matchy matchy. We're going to do matchy matchy. So, how was your day? How was work? My day was good. It was okay. Uh, busy, you know, as usual. Mm-hmm. Good. Um, it's a little um, foggy. It was a little foggy this morning. Yeah. Over here, and it's getting really cold. It's getting Is it? Very, yes. It's down in the 30s now. So. so the other day, all of us were running around screaming, sweater weather. <laughs> <laughs> Today, it's shorts weather. Just it uh, lasted like two days. So okay. AC's back on. It's humid out today. It was partly cloudy and humid. And uh, well, yeah. At least I got a break for a couple of days. Yeah, I know. We did. We did. I just, I was all excited. <laughs> it was short-lived. <laughs> I know. It's okay. You can come up here. It's never short-lived here. <laughs> <laughs> I may do that. Yeah. I may do that. You never know. Nope. You never know. So. so you're having a drink tonight, I see. I did. I made eggnog today. It's, it's oh. the season. It is eggnog season. And I'm jealous because I'm not there to taste it. So. Yes. <laughs> but it's it looks eggnog really season. fabulous. I haven't had a sip yet. Okay. Well, I'm going to mix uh, my drink. Yeah. So I found this fancy drink, and it's called Friends with Booze. <laughs> I like that. So I thought it was... You know, something that we can just sit and mix together yeah. since there we're friends. We're and friends. I've got the booze. <laughs> and you've got booze. I've got booze too. Mine's pre-mixed. So yours mine, is pre-done. I, I made it. I made it earlier. Yes. So, but yours so, looks fancy and all um, a little more involved than mine. Yeah. So I tried it out um, probably about a week ago just to kind of taste it and see if it was really good. Obviously, I'm not going to drink something you know that's nasty. Yeah. So. Um, and it actually was really good. So it's a mixture of vodka, which I use absolute, and then it's uh, Malibu rum, and then pina colada mix, and then a strawberry lemonade. And anybody, you guys like can pick whatever you know you want, and then uh, blue curacao. So if anybody wants to know, you know what it is, it's actually when I you'll see. I'm gonna start it, and we're gonna put it in the glass. And then you'll see it's like glitter in a glass. That's cool. That's yeah. cool. So I'm going to let you talk while I'm mixing. <laughs> oh, are you? <laughs> it's all you, baby. It's all me. Oh, great. Yes. <laughs> so no, I'll, um, I'll chime in every once in a while. I'll chime in ahead. every once yeah. in a while. I just kind of want to see you put this together and anything with rum in it. Well, rum's my fave. And you're measuring out uh, the portions. Two. Okay. Yep. Two ounces of rum. Of the Malibu rum. Nice. Yeah, and then I made a mess. Don't make a mess. <laughs> well, have you ever made eggnog? No, I've never made eggnog. It's messy. <laughs> <laughs> Just you saying. Know. Just saying. It's it's messy, and uh, so I had to clean up earlier. So is yeah. it really that? Is it really that messy? Well, um. No, uh, it's, you know, it's getting it out of the, the bowl you mix it in because it's, you know, it's made with eggs, milk, yeah. cream, sugar, 
booze. <laughs> mm. And uh, this this batch has rum and brandy in it. Um, I only wow. put two in this one. And uh, there's enough alcohol in here that it's good for two weeks, two and a half weeks. Um, so, but cool. it's getting it out of the bowl because you have to separate and you mix them in, in, you know, the yolks and the sugar start off in one. Then you got to do the egg whites to form light peaks in another bowl. And then you got to fold one into the other and then you got to get it out of that bowl into a pitcher and I do use a ladle and I do use a um, funnel but it it's not perfect <laughs> oh, that's okay it's perfect in your cup that's yes all that matters. and the majority does make it into the pitcher so there it works go. out <laughs> you there know? you go so yeah so, so I did let's see if anybody wants the recipe I'm just gonna say it now so it's two ounces of the Malibu rum I just added one ounce of the um, vodka I'm gonna do a half an ounce of the blue curacao watch it mix I gotta show it to you it's fabulous you do have to show it to me yes Woo! that's a lot <laughs> a half an ounce. look look ready ready watch I'm watching Oh, Woo very cool. <laughs> I like that. Aww. I like that. And then one ounce of pina colada. And I like pina coladas. And this is where I make a mess. This, this is, is the worst <laughs> mess ever. This unfortunately is the worst mess ever. Because the pina colada doesn't come out of the bottle like a normal person. Well, it's not a person, but you know what. <laughs> like you want it to, right? Exactly, exactly. All right, so let's put this in. And there you go. It's almost like a lava lamp. See? I'm watching. Yeah. Well, it's, it's blue. like a lava lamp. My favorite. Oh, look how cool that is. Yeah. My your favorite, favorite color. color. Yes. yes. See, you know what oh, you're doing. I, I knew it. I knew it. Okay. I was like, I gotta pick her favorite color tonight. Yeah, that was it. No, that wasn't. It. No, I know I it wasn't lie. it. <laughs> Don't lie. <laughs> I can't lie, but it is your favorite color, so. It is my favorite color. It is. So here comes the three ounces of the strawberry lemonade. Look at look, that. It turns it purple. It turns it purple. Look at that. Nice. And where did you come up with this? Did you? Um, I looked up a couple of recipes and then I just kind of started mixing stuff by myself. <laughs> and then I was like, okay, that tastes good. <laughs> so I wrote it down on my little, my little paper here. You see that? Oh, very it down. cool. You did. Yeah. So, so it's kind of your own it creation. Like. It does yes. look like glitter in a cup. I like that. Yeah. So let me mix it up. And as I mix it, you can see, you can actually see the, it looks like glitter. I was like surprised. I gotta put the caps on these darn things. <laughs> or you so will they, have a mess. Oh yeah. Or or I'll ruin my computer and then I'll never. Oh, and then I'll have a meltdown and you'll have podcast. a meltdown. It won't yeah. be good. <laughs> no, no. You'll be like, dear Santa, all I want for Christmas is a new laptop. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God! I just got this laptop too a couple of years ago so no thank you it's very expensive. right yeah well here nice oh that is so cool i like that hold on let me see if i can get it up here so you can see it see that is neat like glitter look it's like glitter yeah that's cool neat it's different, you know. It is. Different. Yeah, well, I was going for the, the Christmassy theme. It's eggnog season. Yeah, and already a, f a few months ago, coworkers are like, so if I bring a mason jar, are you going to fill it with eggnog for me? <laughs> oh, they're prepared. <laughs> yeah. I give out, I give them out mason jars. And then, you know, if you return the mason jar, I have it for next year. Well, not many came back last year. And I just thought, you know, I'm not going to keep buying cases of mason jars. <laughs> it's like, Oh, they need to bring oh. their own if they want. Bring your own mason jar and I will fill it up. <laughs> BYMJ. <My demo. laughs> I actually had. I was 
<laughs> we'll just let that go. Anyways. <laughs> I know, I know. I have, I just, I don't even gutter know. <laughs> it's gutter head, you know. Well, it's anyways. It's time and it's gutter head. So. Well, yeah, among other things. <laughs> Oh, All right, well, how well about we have cheers. a drink? Cheers, cheers to you. Cheers. 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 You can cheers. See. <laughs> cheers. So oh, I haven't to, had a sip. You, you have to describe when you drink it. I have exactly to describe. Yes. I, I can't say no. It, <laughs> it has to be a sexy description. <laughs> mm -mm. <laughs> Let me go a step further. You know the color of this? <laughs> White, creamy. <laughs> it's and it's frothy on top. And <laughs> creamy, saying. yeah. This is why I'm going to hell. <laughs> <laughs> it's okay. My pina colada is the same way. So but it is delicious. Mm. And I have cinnamon sprinkled on top. Oh, man. And you have a beautiful cup that you put it in, though. Look at that cup. I love my blue cups. Yes, I love it. It's so fancy. It's fancy smancy. Like it. <laughs> Thank you. I like that style cup. They had a whole set of them. I was looking into. This is a too. set I bought, and you can get it in different colors. And what is this this called? Uh, a Especially, goblet? No, the 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 pattern on here. Oh, the pattern. Because it's know. it's bumpy. Yeah. It's um. I don't know. H. So, anyways, I thought they were kind of neat and different. And of course, it's blue. So. You know, if I'm buying it and it, I have the blue option, it's going to be blue. It's going to be blue. Yeah. It's going to be blue. So, of yeah. Course. So, yeah. So I do have a set of them and I thought it was kind of perfect for this. I was going to get out my, uh, my Grinch mug, but it's a coffee mug. It's not the same. <laughs> no, it's not the same. Yeah, not the same. Okay. No, that cup. I love that cup. That's an awesome cup. Thank you. What's your favorite color? Red. I thought so. They have them in red. Because I was going to say, if they didn't have blue, my next color would be red. What? I know. They have them in red. And they're pretty. Yeah. I'm going to need to get some then. Yeah. Or something I, similar to that. I will have to look it up for you. Yeah. But yeah, I am. Um, well, I didn't know they come in red. The only ones I saw are the blue ones that you have. And then I saw like yellow ones or like gold, I guess. Oh. Once. Mm -hmm. yeah. And then they had clear ones, but that's it. I've seen gray. I've mm -hmm. seen the clear. I've seen red. I've seen green and I've seen blue. Nice. So. Oh, yeah. Green. I did see mm -hmm. green before. It's a pretty emerald green. Yes. Guess yeah. where I've seen those cups before, too. We have, um, what are they called it here? Uh, oh, my gosh. I can see the little face with the smiley thing and everything like that. Like the goodwill. Oh, the goodwill. <laughs> <laughs> I know, right? I'm sitting here trying to picture it. <laughs> I was not expecting goodwill. <laughs> yes, you can go in there and get some neat stuff sometimes. I When I used to back in the day and I was a stay-at-home mom, one thing I did do when eBay – gosh, it was even – it was – yeah, I was a stay-at-home mom, and my sister had turned me on to eBay – it was new back then or newer or something. And so I would go to thrift stores and buy items that I could sell and make money on eBay. And I would have a couple hundred dollars a week worth of shipping alone on eBay stuff to ship out. I had those big metal industrial racks in the garage. I had eight or nine of them full of things to sell on eBay. Oh, and that's uh, awesome. Yeah, it was, it was fun. The hunt was fun. But the one thing I kept out of all that were these little white ceramic plates and they were made by Falsecraft. Mm -hmm. I paid 10 cents each. I have like 30 of them, oh. right? And you flip them over and it says Falsecraft on one side, the other side, Eastern Airlines. They were oh, like yeah. their fancy plates for like first class. <laughs> <laughs> I paid 10 cents each and I, I use them like as dessert plates. I think they're the coolest things. <laughs> they are the coolest things. I, that was a great I'm, find. It was. I get them out. And people are like, where'd you get these? I'm like, mm-mm. <laughs> not going to say where. <laughs> yeah. And it's been a while now. But, yeah, yeah. I, it was so cool because it has a little Eastern Airlines 
symbol and the word Eastern Airlines stamped in the back of them all. Oh my and God, Paul, that is cool. Paul Scraft made them for Eastern, and it was like the first class. I might have 30 to 40 of them. Mm-hmm. That's nice. Yeah. That's awesome. Yeah. So you got to have was... a big party so you can use them. Oh, gosh, no. <laughs> <laughs> the dogs big do not Christmas allow party. that many people in the house at once ever. <laughs> well, like, not there. Maybe you can run a place for you know, uh, my son is kind of seeing this girl, I believe, and I've met her. I've seen her twice now. Today was the second time, and she seems nice, and uh, she's an uh, art teacher at an elementary school. Okay, good. And um, Art. Yeah, and the hound, he's the worst critic of them all. <laughs> <So> <laughs> he is bad, I tell you. And he just goes barreling up to her, and I don't ever know what to expect out of him, but he jumps up and kind of gives her, he, he does this nudge thing with his snoot, that's how he kisses, he doesn't really lick or anything, just, hi, <laughs> right in the nose <laughs> to everybody, he does it to me too, he's like, hi. <laughs> I could like that one, that's yeah. the, the other, the licking in your mouth, I don't, I don't well, I don't allow the licking in my mouth, I, you know, Axel, I give kisses, and he's always trying to get me back, and every now and then it gets up a nostril, but other than that, it's like, well, you know, avoid. mistake. Yeah, it's okay. Yeah. yeah, but yeah, so, but other than that, today was hair appointment day for myself and a few errands and um, kind of just doing stuff around the house and trying to get motivated to finish decorating the Christmas trees. Have you put up your Christmas tree? Uh, no, that's next week. Next week, I'm about to put my Christmas tree up actually in the restaurant because that's where I live now. So... <laughs> We're going to go ahead and, and put that up next week and decorate in here and make it look all nice and pretty. So mm-hmm. I've kind of changed. I have lights on the windows that are in the front. So I kind of have like a garage door that opens in the summertime. Oh. And then I can open it and close it as I want. And then so I put like a curtain of lights over there. So mm-hmm. um, and then I can change the lights. It has a, a remote control and you can change the lights and everything to whatever color you want whatever color you're feeling. So I did multicolor, you know, Christmassy type of color. But That's yeah, cool. everything's going up next week. So. Well, sometimes you're in the mood and sometimes you're not. I have two trees. I have a normal size, average, I don't know, six, seven foot, whatever that is. And then I have a smaller little tabletop. And um, I still haven't decorated the smaller one. I did, I did put a string of lights on it last night. And, okay. uh, but, that was, but that's as far as I got with that. And I've been adding ornaments slowly to the big one still normally I do it all at once not really feeling it this year so I'm just kind of trying to I don't know yeah I don't blame you. I'm dragging my feet so to speak so that's okay I'm not really feeling it either this um this year um but you know I luckily I have I don't have to do it all by myself so I have girls here that can actually help and they really like to help so I'm like yeah. go for it Send them down. I will. I will. I'm on in. Decorate. Away. I'll give you some eggnog and we'll call it even. There you <laughs> go. I'm sure they would love to. You know, so yeah. So I'm trying to get motivated and I, I am determined to wrap some of the baby's gifts this weekend. Oh, good. You're ahead of the schedule. Well, you know, he's getting a few big items and some small ones and then he's going to get some clothes and that's really what he's getting. I mean, he's 17 months. Um Oh, he'll be 18 months here in a few days. So, you know, he's going to get gifts from everybody, his parents, the great grandparents, the other grandparents, the other, uh, what are they, aunts and uncles and all them. He, you know. Oh, he's going to be loaded. He's going to be loaded. He's, you know, they're not going to have enough room for all of that. And obviously then uh, she's getting ready to have her second baby on the 14th. So I'll have the baby from the night of the 13th for like, I don't know, three or four days because of the cesarean. But yeah, so, you know, there's a lot going on and I don't know. Yeah. Yeah. It's busy, busy at your house this time of year. Something's happening. <laughs> <laughs> well, somebody's going to have a baby. So that's always a blessing. Yes. Yeah. And um, yeah, well, I mean, if I was your daughter, I'd be like, gift certificates, everyone. Just give me that. Well, I give her that every year. She's specific about her clothes and what she likes. So I just get it at her favorite store and then she can have at it. So, oh, dear, you that's know, the best thing. And, and it's unfortunate because, you know, I, I do still fill their stockings here with stuff 
but oh, supplies nice. that they need, like, you know, yes. but, you know, she, you know, likes a specific toothpaste that I buy that not everyone else buys. So I load her up on a few tubes of that and stuff that she likes and stuff, which makes her happy. And yeah, you know, so. that's all that matters. Yeah. And my son's always the practical one. He's like sending me, I would like these boxers, this underwear, these socks. <laughs> Well, that's good, though. At least it's something that he's getting that he's going to use, not something that you're going to get. And then you're just going to put, you know, away somewhere in the closet or or underneath the shelf or somewhere. So, yeah. Yeah. Um, he's always been kind of like that. And I'm like, why do you ask for this stuff for, you know, Christmas? He's like, I don't want to spend my money on the necessities. <laughs> Like, okay. Oh, that's why. <laughs> Fair enough. I asked. <laughs> yes, yes. Fair but enough. But you know what? It always answer. seems to be that way. It's like guys, they always seem to get like boxers or like, um, uh, I want to say wife beaters, but I'm sure everybody knows that terminology. Oh, yeah, they do. Um, yeah. Yeah. They like to get those tank toppy things and then you know, socks and all those I don't those allow those in my house. <laughs> yeah. Well, we're no one, used to that. No one wants to see your hairy armpits. I'm sorry. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know what? Growing up, my dad always um, had that on. And, you know, a lot of Middle Eastern people, actually, they they have those. My dad would do yard work and stuff just in shorts. No T-shirt. And, no T-shirt. And just, yeah. yeah. So, you know, I'm, I'm used to seeing all that. But. I just don't want to on everyone. <laughs> no, and I don't blame you. That's meant for home, though. It's not meant for be like like to be all outside in that. My brother never wears it outside. My dad never wears it outside. Yeah. So I, I don't remember him wearing anything like that. I just yeah, know, even my ex-boyfriend, he only wears it in the house. He doesn't really wear it outside. He never wore it outside. So yeah. yeah I mean, just but... armpits in general aren't pretty. <laughs> no, they're not. They're not. <laughs> But you know what? We, we, well, the male version of we, um, <laughs> they actually shave. They don't shave all the way down. They just trim. Really? Yeah. So they keep it nice and clean. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I mean, not to say that you want to still see it. It's just, at least it's nice and clean. Well, <laughs> I'm not sure I'm feeling that. <laughs> Oh, well, I mean, I, I don't have an armpit fetish or anything like that. <laughs> oh, please, just I'm trying to drink the eggnog. <laughs> oh my. Yeah. Well. <laughs> we okay. kind of decided it's we were just laugh. gonna kind of do. Uh, well, no, you do make me laugh. I do. I love the laugh. It's the best medicine. Makes me feel better. I see feel better. We said we were going to kind of do a pour it out. Um, I would like to do a pour it out with a guest sometimes. I know that Danny messaged me and was like, when do I get to come on type deal? And so um, I need to get the microphone and stuff and I will be doing that here shortly and get some headphones or whatever these things are on our ears. For. <laughs> and, um, and then of course um, our other people that we want to have on that have said that they were going to come on. But we were just going to kind of talk and kind of just see where the conversation went. I did ask a few questions this week on Facebook. Um, the responses were not, uh, they were responses, and I'm grateful for them. But, like, you know, what's the worst advice you've um, ever been given? And, you know, some people put be impulsive. Well, I guess that depends on what you're doing when you're doing that. Yeah. You know, um, someone I did, I said, asked also asked the same question, kind of the same question I put, you know, what's the best advice you were given? And someone put, don't eat the yellow snow. Well, <laughs> <laughs> did you really have to be advised? <laughs> if me being a Floridian, seeing <laughs> snow for the first time when I was like 20, yeah. And if it was yellow, I would have thought that that can't be good. Uh, <laughs> or black. Or, or black. Oh, Tony, just, the black snow. Yeah, yeah, no. So, you know, I, <laughs> yeah. it wasn't anything earth shattering, you know. Um, one, our mutual friend, um, the saying, everything in moderation. 
Well, oh, that's yes, nice. she she doesn't care for that. She thinks it needs to be rewarded. Um, I understand why she thinks that. Um, but I think sometimes you have to be more point blank with people. Some people, it depends on yeah. the, the person. Yeah. So, you know, for people in general, moderation is hard. <laughs> you know, you know it it's is. like have a little slice, not half the pie. <laughs> right, exactly. I, so when I think moderation, I think along those terms. Yeah. You know, and, I, she, I, and she was putting it more towards like drugs and alcohol and stuff. Well, I've never done a drug in my life. Uh, the alcohol just depends on how much rum I put in it. <laughs> <laughs> well, to mention the alcohol, like, um, I, I, when I was in my twenties, like, you know, I had already had a child by that point in time and haven't really, hadn't really experienced, I guess the bar a hop or whatever they call it. So, um, didn't experience it until probably my mid twenties. And of course, when you're that age and you're like, oh, alcohol, you know, that's great. But when you're out with people, you're like just drinking and having a good time. After a while, you're not feeling yourself anymore, <laughs> needless to say. And then no. like you take another drink and then it's like it's water. You know what I mean? So you keep yeah. drinking. So yeah. I can understand about the moderation with the alcohol. Well, um, it's moderation in everything. I mean, it's like. It is. You know, for me, I, because I'm not a big drinker, believe it or not, even though I made a pitcher of eggnog today, this will probably be my only glass out of that pitcher. My son has discovered he likes my eggnog. <laughs> and last year, it seemed to disappear rather quickly. And then he would bring someone over and be like, here, try my mom's eggnog. <laughs> and then they would sit here. <laughs> Anyways, so <laughs> I think I had two glasses all season last year out of the pictures I made. So this is glass oh. number one. I'm going to keep a tally this year and how many I actually get out of each picture. All right. But um, yeah, so anyways, everything in moderation. I don't know how else you would word it that you would care for it, but it's pretty point and blank. And I think that's the problem with many people is they have a hard time controlling understand yeah controlling is you know true. um another thing she didn't like was god will not give you more than you can handle huh and that's on the good advice side worse advice the worst advice well i kind of for myself i think i would take it both ways it could be a worse advice it could be a good advice um I am a Catholic Maronite um, by birth, so we follow the um, Italian, um, or Latin, I should say, Catholic rite, and <laughs> yes, well, you know, <laughs> and so um, I am not a fanatic over my religion. I pray because uh, it makes me feel good. Um, but I don't know. I, I'm on the fence with that one, to be honest with you. I, I don't know. I mean, it could be good. It could be bad. It yeah. could be good advice because, yeah, this is how sometimes I was taught, I guess, maybe to think or even just myself. I would think like, you know, everything has a purpose in life. You know, it does. And she kind of goes a little more into it. She's this is not true. In this life, you may have troubles and difficulties, but God is there to help you through those challenges. Ultimately, and I believe she's the one who said this two years ago, PTA, pray, think and act. Ultimately, it's up to you to decide which path you're going to choose. You have to pray, think about it, act upon it. If that's how you make decisions, you know, everyone handles everything differently. So she doesn't really care for that saying and I agree with her I, I don't care for that saying either yeah I I just I just don't I know that there are people who tell me all the time I just pray that it gets better and their life is they make really poor choices all the time like choosing to stay addicted to drugs yeah not choosing not helping themselves choosing not helping the right themselves. word not yeah. helping themselves they sit there and say oh I wish I could stop but then make no effort to stop Mm -hmm. So, you know, and they just like, I pray that I can stop. It's like, well, you actually have to do the work. Yeah. Yeah. You can, you know, you may pray to God to get through these times and the trying times and the temptations and all of that, that goes along with addiction. 
but ultimately you have to do the work. And if you don't do the work or you do it half-assed, it's not going to work. No. Or if you tell yourself, I'm just going to go and have this one drink, you screwed up all the hard work you've done to get to that point. Yeah, absolutely. You know, so it's, there's no one waving a wand. Mm -hmm. And I think that's kind of what she's implying. It's, that's not how it works. So, yeah. you know, um, someone else posted, I got a job offer. I was disappointed in the money and told my husband, he advised me to ask for a quarter more, a quarter more. Yeah. Feeling I was worth that. I asked for it. The company came back and withdrew my offer. Ah. What? <laughs> what? <laughs> oh, my I gosh. Was, I was sad and devastated. Oh, no. I don't even know what to say to that. I don't. <laughs> to be honest, A I really quarter. don't. quarter. Well, first of all, how long ago was this? Yeah. Yeah, nowadays it's not a quarter. I mean, for Christ's no. sake, the tooth fairy doesn't may feel quarter. like a quarter. <laughs> <laughs> it may. <laughs> not a quarter. Shit, the damn tooth fairy leaves more money nowadays under I your pillow know. than a damn quarter. <laughs> I know, right? <laughs> so, and um, someone else wrote, "Don't go back to school. You will spend too much time studying. Why would you? Why would you want to travel there? The this was not only this not really." This was not really advice, but a very old fashioned opinion of how I should be living. So glad I didn't listen to any of it. And by the way, I traveled to South Africa for work and I loved every minute of it. So she was told. Don't go she back was, to school. You spend too much time studying. Why would you want to travel there? I don't know. I, I don't know. I have never heard that. My parents were always like study, 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 get an education, get this, get that, do this, yeah. do that. So that that's a different one for me. I, yeah. I've never heard that. And then someone else posted, I was given the advice not to follow my dream slash passion to be more realistic, worry more about making money. That's uh, some people I've heard about saying that um, some people are more uh, thinking about the here and now and saying that some of the dreams may be out of reach for some people. Um, I was always taught to follow my dreams, whatever dream that I had, I would follow. Um, but at the same time, um, I should retract that actually. I don't think I don't, I was told to follow what I like to do. Yes. But I think mine had boundaries to be honest with you. You know, my parents set a boundary. Yes. You need a good education. Yes. You need to go to school. Yes. You need to get a diploma or a degree or something of that sort because that's what they were taught when they were young you know but at the it's, same time it's no follow your dreams if you have a dream yeah. don't let anybody tell you otherwise no matter even if it's unreachable I think I mean for me I could have probably went in 500 different directions yeah yeah and then a co-worker she's so funny Wrote, wrote, I don't recall being given any bad advice. I was told I give bad advice. <laughs> oh, that's a good one. That's cute. <laughs> Stop giving that advice. <laughs> She's funny. Um, as far as the good advice goes, uh, starve the distractions, feed your focus. And that's that's very good advice. That is something I need to practice now. Yes, that is good. For myself. Mm -hmm. Definitely. Uh, never drive through a median per my dad. It's dangerous. <laughs> I agree 100%. Go to the light or next turning lane. So you don't oh. want to ride with <laughs> you don't want to ride with me. <laughs> no, and you don't um, want to ride with me because I'm I don't follow that. <laughs> I don't follow that advice at all. No, I will. I I'm will like not right uh, through. You're not going to scoot up. Fine, I'll just drive on the median. That's fine. I don't care. <laughs> that's yeah. Works. Oh um, yeah. Shit, I, I have uh, an SUV. I'll go right through the damn thing. Right. I have a little baby Tacoma, and so yeah. I, even in my Beamer, I was just like, whatever. <laughs> yeah. Like, it has tires. They're rubber. We're good. <laughs> yes. Exactly. Move along. So, granted, I stayed on my side of the median and did not go into head-on traffic. <laughs> Well, yeah, 
but I was navigating and, you know, I had to get around something. So I just, yeah. you know, drove on it. Slow sort people. Of. Yeah. Well, yeah, there's that. <laughs> drive on the right. Slow people drive on the right. Okay. We all took the same class. Right. So we read um, the same book. <laughs> well, you hope. <laughs> yeah. Uh, another our same mutual friend um travel while you are young wish i had started sooner but there's no time like the present um and i agree with that i wish i, I agree had. with the same, mm-hmm. same yeah i really wish i had to you know um also everyone's like work 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 for the money but you also got to enjoy that money yes don't work, work, work and not enjoy it and save every penny and be like, I'm not going to splurge and buy this for myself. I yeah. splurge on myself. I do too. You, you have know, to. do I You're do it all the time? Hard. Do I do it all the time? No, because I pay my own bills, but I do occasionally, you know, if I see well, something no, it, and it, I walk it's... away and then I come back two days later because it's not at me. <laughs> 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 that happens that happens once in a while not often but once in a well, while well so. you know like yes you have to pay your bills i mean you're not going to put yourself uh in no. debt over you know uh everybody it has to be has within to my do. means within reason so. yeah of yes. course within reason you know um yeah and you know people wrote do stuff while you can uh, well, I have another one. Don't get married young. Live your life. Set yourself up and uh, get yourself all situated before you get married. Enjoy your life and then get married and settle down. If, I, if I agree with that. You choose, you know? I've tried to tell my children, don't get married till you're like 30. <laughs> yes. <laughs> you know, figure out what you want to do or try to go some direction, work on something. You know, um, do some traveling, have some experiences, see some part of the world. Yes. You know, don't don't get married. Find yourself. Find Find, yourself first. Find yourself. Um, Yeah. And not everyone did that. But that's okay. I mean, well, life not not everyone was advised to do that. No one ever said it was more of a expectation to do so at a young age. Get married. So. Yeah, yeah, very old fashioned. Very thinking. Yes. Yeah. Um, well, it's you, not that it's not that old fashioned in um in uh, oh my gosh, where is it? In Egypt, actually, believe it or not, um on the Christian side, mm-hmm. they are if you're like 22 years old, you're old. Like you have to get married when you're young. Well, I have news for you. <laughs> You need to come to Florida. <laughs> we have a chat. <laughs> yes. But just yeah. to show you a different culture, I mean, that still exists now. Oh, it does still ex- exist. Um, and yeah, you know, I had some, I had a couple in my life that I met when I was 10, when my parents got divorced, who lived on the beach. I mean, everyone's like, how did you learn to raise seahorses? Well, I read books. I had a great science teacher at fifth grade at Anona, Mr. Hall. He helped me get the little mini tank going and I read books. And then from there, I met a lady who um, lived down the road, who was a customer, a boating customer of my sister's, who ironically had seahorses and lived just blocks away. And so I learned a lot from her as well. So uh, they end up being like surrogate parents to me. Oh, that was sweet. That's nice. And I traveled with them. And I mean, and I said I traveled with them, Caymans, Bonaire, New York, Keys. They treated oh, me like their really daughter. Traveled. No, yeah. I really traveled with them. They treated me like their daughter. And uh, he took me to get my driver's driver's license. He did the fatherly things with me. I mean, I got them cards on Mother's Day as a Father's Day. I mean, I was there every day after school. My mom worked and I would go home, do what I need to do. And I'd go down to their house, get on my bicycle and ride down to their house. And then they would follow me home every night on their, in their car and make sure I got home safely. I ate dinner with them every night. I spent the majority of my childhood in their house. When they oh, would travel you. out of town, like when they went to their property in Costa Rica and stuff, I would take care of their stuff here. They had properties here and stuff. And um, some people actually thought I was their biological daughter and they just let them. Uh, They were very cautious of how they talked to me and treated me in the sense that they didn't want to step on my mother's toes or anyone in the family's toes. But they were very much for you stand on your own two feet. 
always. Yeah. I mean, I, you know, Dwight's like, Dwight was, you know, 15. I didn't, I don't even think I had my learner's permit. He's like, okay, I need you to drive this old Lincoln from the warehouse down to the house on the beach. And you're going to follow me the whole way. I was like, okay. (laughs) Yes. (laughs) One of their vintage cars. I'm like, sure. (laughs) No license, but we're good to go. Right. I did. Yeah. You know, he taught me to back up a trailer and he taught me, you know, to drive a stick shift because he's like, you're a girl. You can drive a stick shift. You can drive anything. By the way, I love manual cars. They're so much fun (laughs) because of him. Yeah, Yeah, no, he died a few years ago and it broke my heart. Um, He was 90. And uh, yeah, so he had a good long life. But because of them, I've had an interesting childhood. And so a lot of my stories of my childhood that were cool because my mom was poor, by the way, they were wealthy and he had a daughter from a previous marriage. She had no children and um, they treated me like their own. They would take me clothes shopping. They like, you, you want braces? We'll put braces on you. I said, no, I'll do that myself. I mean, because they were always like, you you know, I needed braces and they knew my mom didn't have the money and they're like, we'll do that for you. I'm like, no, no. You know, I mean, did my kids were there for you. So, oh yeah, for everything. They yeah. did my kids' college funds when they were born. Um, they did well, lump sum no, I payments. Mean, they sounded like they gave you like really, really good advice. I mean, well, they were they they did in a roundabout way. When yeah, I look right. back, because I was young, and they did not want to step on my mom's feet sure, or toes because they I was not their family by no means their family. So um, it's really the best advice for women for anyone today always stand on your own two feet um and danny posted you are the only person that can make you happy and that is so true you are the only person that can make you happy yeah and no no one can do it for you no absolutely not no one can do it for you no No. one has control over your happiness anyway that's something for yourself that uh, you should always have control over and not let anybody um step all over that at all we were talking about boundaries in our uh, couple episodes back or whatever and that's kind of one of the boundaries that that every person should have don't let anybody take your happiness away from you I've actually said that to someone why do you get to be in charge of my happiness absolutely absolutely you know you are in charge of everything yes I wish I knew that younger, <laughs> sooner, <laughs> realized it sooner. Yeah, me too. I think I realized it in my 30s, to be honest with you, because I was always the caregiver and, you know, um, you know, just following traditions and things like that. So I would have liked to realize that a lot sooner, but it's okay. At least I did. I, I agree. I, I think I realized it as well in my 30s. Um I know I did. So, um, and I have one here where a friend of mine, she put, call him. This is the best advice. Call him. When I told my sister, I wondered what Tony was up to after he graduated from college. We've been married almost 38 years now. If she hadn't encouraged me, I'm not sure where I'd be. Oh, wow. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So don't be afraid to make that call, you know? No, definitely not. Life don't is wonder. Short. Yeah, don't, don't wonder. wonder. Don't wonder. Yeah. Life is Just, short. Yeah. Call them, meet them. If it's good, it's good. If it's not, it's not. At least you know. Right. And you tried. And you tried, you know. Yeah. And uh, so I thought that was kind of a sweet thing. That is. That's a you good know. one. Yeah, I thought it was sweet, you know. And um, what else? I don't know if there was much else. Oh, if he wants to, he will. So that's from my niece. And, like good um, advice? Y- yes, from yeah. a parent of hers. Uh, if he wants to, he will. I've been saying that forever. If he wants to hang out with you, if he wants to talk to you, he wants to text you or whatever, he will. I you think know. it's bad advice. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm a little biased well, over here. So, <laughs> I'm not disagreeing but yeah. <laughs> I'm also I also know her history she was in a, a long-term relationship with a guy who swore he was gonna they were gonna get married he had a good job he was an engineer 
bought their first house together and all this stuff. And she's planning on getting married because he kept promising or saying they were going to. They've had the conversations. And then one day it's like, yeah, we're not. Oh. And when I say together, they were together, I don't know, four or five years. I mean, it wasn't like some little chunk of her life. Oh. You know, she was planning her future with him because he. That's what he said. That's what he said. So um, she realized at that point, if he really wanted to, we still wouldn't be talking about it after all this time. Yeah. Because she very much is very clear about what she wanted. She wanted to be married. She wanted children. She has now been married almost a year, and she's expecting their first baby, a boy. She met someone else since then, and it was just totally different. And he was all about her, and he still is all about her. Granted, they're, they've only been married less than a year. They've been together longer than that. But So she learned a valuable lesson. She committed so many years to someone that there were just empty promises. Yeah, that's true. Well, if you, you look know. at it that way, yeah, I can understand. I can agree with that way. Yeah, if he wants to, he will. Yeah, that's true. I you mean, know. if he and if he doesn't want to, he won't. Yeah, that's true. And it's from any, and that that really just applies to any relationship. Hi, how are you today? Right, it does. Yeah. You know, I it, it applies to any relationship, big or little. The communication is is a huge factor. You know, it is, of course, that's number one. Communication is always number one. If you can't talk about what's going on or what bothers you about that other person or whatever and discuss it and then, you know, fix it or try to fix it or move on from it, then you're not never going to get anywhere in life. I mean, no. and if every time you say something to try and express your feelings or to ask or to have a conversation, it turns into an argument. It says more about the other person who's trying to argue with you than it does about you just trying to have a conversation. Absolutely. Or if they're yeah, even yeah. ignoring you and they're not even listening to the conversation that you're trying to have with have. them. Have. Yeah, that's true, too. And then someone posted, surround yourself with good people that want the best for you. No, and that's, that's good true. advice. Yeah, that's That's true. good advice, you know, yeah. because there are people that don't always want the best for you, but act like... Um, Act like they, they do. do. They fake. Yep. Yeah. Act like Fakers. they do. Fakers and Act. haters. <laughs> <laughs> Which don't really so, matter. Well, you know what? It's true, though, because um, I have you guys as my friends, right? But that's because I, I basically grew up with you. You know what I mean? You were mm -hmm. like right there. You befriended me the first time in Florida. <laughs> and it was like, you know having any regrets yet <laughs> no not yet i'll let you know though. <laughs> she says no on the air but yeah <laughs> so you know obviously uh, there's certain things in your life that kind of stick with you and that's kind of you know what has stuck with me um for my lifetime i remember you know mm -hmm. so but um what i was getting to i think i lost my train of thought now that um, pretty blue drink Yes, I think that's what it is. Exactly. <laughs> I did. I lost my train of thought. I don't. Sorry. I. I sorry, guys. <laughs> I completely forgot. Well, surround yourself with good people. Oh yes. Here we go. So, okay. Now yeah. I remember. So my whole entire life, when I was growing up and stuff, I would not have uh, friends that were my age. Believe it or not, they would always mm -hmm. be a lot older. And that's so funny. Yeah, and I think Me too. I learned a lot from those people. Yeah. You too? Yes. Yeah. And I learned a lot from those people than actually befriending people who were my age because yes. their head was somewhere else. Well, it's a maturity thing. That's what it's, it is. It's yeah. a, it's a maturity thing. Like I I know in my situation I I grew up in ways faster than I needed to because yes. of what was Same. going on at home and it was the survival mode. Um, so I was robbed of certain things. It, it did good things and bad things for me. So I didn't put up with the girl drama. Yes. I just didn't do it. You know, there was one girl in school. We were, I thought good friends and she had other good friends and I really just hung out with her some. I didn't hang out with her other friends cause I really didn't care for them. They were, they were okay, but just didn't have that click, that vibe. And I just like, eh, too much drama. 
And whenever one of her secrets got out, she would blame me. And I'm like, but I'm not the one doing it. So-and-so is out there telling, you know, so-and-so and -and so-and-so told me and they said they heard it from this one. And then so-and-so said, you know, and then you know she would back it. Oh yeah. Drama. And back in, and this is high school. I'm like, you know, this is crap, you know? So she wrote me a letter once and stuck it in my locker, you know, back in the day when you wrote letters and shoved it in the little (laughs) vents of your locker. So anyway, and she was basically, you know, reaming me out. And so I wrote her back another a nasty. She wrote me a nasty letter. I wrote her one back because I was pissed. You know, I'm like, I'm tired of this. Sure. You want to be with those people and, and do the drama and stuff. You go right ahead. Yeah. And um, it involved, I, I kind of talked about it briefly once before, I think, her and her first time with her boyfriend. Uh-huh. It was her first time. And someone was telling everyone at the school. Well, a couple people were. But she automatically assumed it was me. And then she found out it wasn't. She wanted to be friends. And I'm like, no. But she had written a nasty letter and shoved it in my locker. And uh, so I wrote a nasty one back. And I'm like, and then the Sicilian in me, because I'm a little spiteful. I can be when I've had (laughs) enough of someone who has not treated me the best that they could have and never really sorry for their actions and realizing it wasn't me. It was their other friends, you know. Um, uh, I hope you get pregnant. (laughs) She did. <laughs> Stop. Yeah. Oh. oh my God. What goes around, come around. That's karma. <laughs> it is karma, yes. You know, because it was never me. I remember telling, and one of them was a boy who was telling everyone, I'm like, you know, you shouldn't be telling everyone that. And he looked at me dead in the eye because he was a mutual friend of ours. He goes, I really don't care if she oh, knows wow. I'm telling everyone or not. I said, okay, I'm out of it. Because I didn't act like I already knew. And I was trying to have a conversation with him. And he was just like, I don't care. I was like, okay. okay. And I walked away. Yeah. And he was standing like in the courtyard telling everyone. Wow. <laughs> sc- I mean, like if you were within an arm's reach, he's like, hey, did you know so-and-so during break or lunch or whatever it was? I don't remember. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah. Well, I mean, one thing, I I missed all of that stuff. Because I think you didn't I, miss much. That's non quality of everything. it is non quality. It's, it's yeah, a waste that's of what time. I mean. I was so oblivious. Like in high school, I just kind of kept to myself. And then I had, well, you met my friend Elisa. We were kind of mm-hmm. really good friends back in high school time, middle school through high school time and everything. So uh, we were kind of in our own world and we really didn't have that. Like, yeah, nor did, I, nor did I ever want it, but no, um, I can see I, how it w- it could have been like very bad. So well, it's just drama. It's unnecessary. It's a waste of time. It, is. it ruins friendships. But I guess it if does. they were sincere friendships, you wouldn't have been a part of it to begin with. No, definitely not. Definitely you know, not. and you just hope they that they they, they wouldn't grew have up. opened their big mouth. You know. Yeah, so telling everyone what you did, why don't you just keep it to yourself? Well, <laughs> that, exactly, that too, yeah, and don't go running your mouth, you know. That I, should be I, private anyway. Like I know, be so when private. people blame social media, I'm like, well, that was social media back in the day. <laughs> that was social media. Everyone yeah. in the yard, gather yeah. around. <laughs> right. It was. Everyone hang out. We the have the scoop. We had the scoop, the latest, yeah. greatest, on so and so. Yeah. So <laughs> certain things like that have stuck with me memory wise because it's like, you know, I I just didn't participate in that stuff and I certainly don't at this age. I just Well you no, know. that's good. At least you had a leveled head at that time to even think to be like, No, we're not doing that. Sorry. <laughs> yeah. And it's like the people I'm friends with, you and my other uh, good close friends, uh, we've never butted heads. We've no. never had the drama. You no, tell you me know something and you're like, communication. We well, have we have communication. communication, but we trust one another yes. too. So if I tell you something in confidence, I know it doesn't go any further. I don't have no. to worry about you being out in the courtyard telling everybody because you Are just you have sure? the latest, greatest. <laughs> I'm going to have to teeth my hair like I was back in the 80s. <laughs> right. Just stand out there. And, um, my I leggings. Mean, <laughs> your leggings. Hey. <laughs> There was nothing wrong with them leggings back then. I was no, like a size one. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, you were tiny. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, you know, so I, you know, uh, my friend Lara, yeah. we've been friends over 20 years. Not one unkind word or issue, no headbutting, no nothing. 
just yes, always there for true. one another. Those are true those friends. Are true. I, I don't do the drama. So if you were doing drama with me in high school, I most likely have no interest in you now either. <laughs> yeah, exactly. That's true. You know, I really don't. I, I got too much else to deal with. I don't need your yeah. stuff. You know, we don't we don't have time for that. Now. And you would think at this age that being adults, <laughs> like. Yeah. Adults with children of your own and having had relationships or divorces and whatever you've gone through, you just wouldn't be doing that stuff, right? Oh, you think. You would You'd think. I've been very <laughs> surprised. So my one girl I met in, when I worked part-time in Bel Air bought the hair salon next door and I thought we were going to be good friends because she was fun and she was I'm like let's go do this and she's like let's go and she was adventurous and I had a good time with her and she always said I don't trust people I don't trust people she turned out to be a stalker oh my gosh <laughs> and when I stopped talking to her because of all the drama she brought into my life in that year and a half to two years of whatever trying to be her friend mm -hmm. um I uh, stopped being friends. I'm just like, I just, this is work, man. This is, you're accusing this one of sabotaging you. You're accusing that one of this. And then you pick me up my, for my birthday and then we're driving out of the way down to the beach to spy on somebody because you don't believe them, think they're lying to you. And I'm just like, this oh. is my birthday. What? Are, and I'm the passenger. <laughs> like, what's oh, going no. on? <laughs> oh yeah, no, you can't make this shit up. <laughs> so, my God, that's ridiculous. I, you know, and then a few years ago, be, me being back at the clinic, she followed me there. Oh, get out. One morning. Mm -hmm. Oh, no. Yeah, that's too much. She came up behind me and she pulled to the side a little bit behind me. It's a two lane road, but she wanted me to see her in my side view mirror. And she's like flipping me off and making faces. Can I just stop texting? Oh, yes. Yeah, so I... <laughs> what? Yeah. Now, I want you to know this is a grown ass woman with kids in high school, just by, just an FYI. <laughs> and uh, so I would angle my side mirror out so she could see her just herself. You know? <laughs> she doesn't have she... anything better to do. So I, so. I, I always turn at the light and go down West Bay to go to work and she should go straight to the plaza. Kind of where we did dinner that first night when you got to town. Ah, okay. She's in that plaza behind there to work. No, she followed me. I was doing 70 down West Bay because I'm just trying to get to work and I didn't want her to bring her drama to my work. Right. It wasn't like some big, I'm going to, you know, outrun the law type deal. <laughs> I was just trying to get to work and I was able to get to work and park where I park. My luck shall stumble across this podcast. So I'm not going to say where I park. <laughs> <laughs> and I got into the building and I got my phone. I went into my coworker's uh, cubicle because she's got a front cubicle and so she's got a big window. Mm -hmm. And I started taking pictures of her in the parking lot across the street where she's trying to find me. Oh, wow. She had no idea where I went, where I parked. <laughs> yeah. That's you know, and so. She must have been late for work that day. <laughs> she just, she's too busy following you. <laughs> she just, you know, that's just not normal behavior yeah. for anybody. <laughs> you know? And my coworkers and are too watching me. Effort. It's, it is too much effort. It's my coworkers effort. are watching me and they're like, what are you doing? <laughs> and I'm like, look at her. And they're all watching. And I took pictures and I went on Facebook and I posted and told my story. Because her coworkers are friends of mine and they would tell her. And I ah. wanted her to know, I wanted her to know that I had posted it. Even though I had blocked her on Facebook because she okay. was stalkerish, I wanted her to know and boy, did they message me. Oh, this doesn't surprise me. She does this. She does that. She accuses us of all kinds. Of, I just, I mean, just the way she oh was. Oh, my God, those poor kids. I but that's what I thought. Is kids? that what she's teaching these children? Yeah. Or maybe yeah. that's just something on the side that she does by herself and nobody knows that I, she's actually doing that. I don't know. I, wow. I never, yeah, that's I too never, much effort. That's too much effort. And nobody has time for that sad because she was kind and she was fun and I enjoyed her company but she was just a, a little cuckoo yeah. <laughs> well, not to make fun start. not to make fun or anything but you know I was like oh good lord she's following me <laughs> yeah Woo. she has demons 
she's got something. And, you know, she had sold her house and she moved closer to me. We're going to walk for extra because I walked at night with the dogs and yeah, I'm going to yeah. meet you. We're going to walk and all this stuff. So now she was living like blocks from me. <laughs> oh my gosh. Yeah. Good times. Yeah. Good times. Mm-hmm. Did she move? I don't know where she's at now. I don't ask. Oh, well, hope, well, how but I will say the few times I've seen her on the road in the last few years, mm-hmm. and it's probably been about a year since I've seen her, but the few times I okay. would see her on the road, she won't, she hasn't flipped me off. She was flipping me off, you know, regularly um, and uh, stuff, but because I posted that when I posted that for everyone to see and for her coworkers to be like, this is what Shar said. And hear yeah. the pictures like they see that I'm at work and they see her in the parking lot across. Right. That's like, terrible. Parked and then pulling out with her Alabama tag on the front. <laughs> so, oh, my gosh. And this they're is... like, we're not surprised. So I did that on purpose because I wanted her to know that I did know I did see you at work. My work saw you. Management asked me about it because <laughs> everybody saw the... freaking saw you. <laughs> well, because they saw the post. And they wanted to make sure that I was okay. So yeah. So yeah. Um, I wanted yeah. I wanted her to know that you know her behavior's not acceptable. No, that's erratic behavior. That's crazy behavior. Yeah. You know, and maybe she needs to to get that fixed. Well, and ironically, she would be like, you know, I always lose girlfriends. This always happens to me. I'm like, well, oh, what's the I've common denominator? <laughs> I've heard that. I've heard that one before. I had a, a I had a friend of mine and um, her and I used to be real close. We used to be co-workers and we used to be close and everything like that. And, um, you know, she would throw me birthday party. I would throw her birthday party, you know, things like that. And we'd hang out or whatever. And she'd always tell me that, oh, she didn't have many girlfriends. And I'm like, Oh, I'm thinking to myself, okay, well, this girl doesn't like drama. That's probably why she doesn't have that many girlfriends. Nope. That is not why. <laughs> is that why? <laughs> she was the drama? She was the drama. And that is why. That's yeah. why she doesn't have girlfriends. She doesn't keep them because she creates the drama for herself and tries to reel you in to her drama. Yeah. And I'm not playing that game. So no. I ended up no. just stopping talking. I mean, know, when I, I yeah, when I stopped being friends with her, it was just peaceful, you oh, know, and yes. she would text me. There's this movie playing in the movie theater about friendship. I think it could really help us. What? Get out of here. I'm like, <laughs> help us. I don't stalk people. I'm just saying. <laughs> I think it could help you, not us. I'm like, first of all, we're not a married couple. I would have divorced you if this was your behavior. (laughs) No kidding. Yeah. Help help us. Help us help you. (laughs) Yeah, right. She really wanted to be your friend, but she just didn't know how to do it. And she ended up taking it way too far. And that's why she doesn't have girlfriends. But not know how to do it. Pascal, she stalks her employees. <laughs> I I know. No, she doesn't know how to do it. I don't know. I mean, I don't. I don't that's beyond. I don't know what's in her head. I know what's in there either. And I'm I'm good not knowing. I'm okay. <laughs> mm-hmm. I'm I'm okay with with not. I think knowing. she wants. I think she wants friends so bad. And this is the only way that she thinks that it's okay to do. And that's in her head. I'm not saying that's right. I'm just saying that's something in her head that she's probably created. And she's like, this is the way we're going to do it. And then, like you said, she's not in a relationship. That's not your husband. She's not in a relationship with you. So, no, we don't need counseling. (laughs) Go somewhere. Right. (laughs) I just, uh, I was just like, this is too much work. (laughs) You know, I want to go to dinner and have a drink and a nice conversation. I'm not looking for stalking people. Yeah, when friendship when friendship gets to be to the point where you cannot enjoy the other person and their time that's spent with you um, in a normal, regular fashion, joking, drinking, whatever, eating, whatever it is, then no, it's not worth it anymore. No, definitely not. But she was trying to repair it with a movie. (laughs) 
counseling. <laughs> and I'm just like, you're too old. You know, it's she's not a little kid. She's grown up. She is who she is. Exactly. And she's telling me she has no girlfriends for a reason. Then there's got to be some kind of pattern. <laughs> I just don't need to be a part of it. And it's not my job to fix. No, it's not. She has to fix that on her own. But it almost wonders, it makes me wonder, what kind of childhood did she have? I I don't know. But her dad and mom are successful. He's a veterinarian and he has his own clinic. And the her one sister works there. And she has told me time and time again, her sister is the favorite. She's oh, telling me that she all has the time. A lot of animosity. So maybe she does, but however, I've not met the sister, and that's not my problem. <laughs> I just, no. and, <laughs> yeah, know. when it really comes down to it, it's not. I mean, we can you sit know. here and try to identify problems and issues that she had, but. To be honest, it's really not any of our problems. So. No, it's it's not our problem. And, I mean, she was accusing the one girl of sabotaging. She had a makeup line of, of sabotaging it. And she said she had it on camera. She hid little cameras. And she, I said, well, show me the video. I want to see. Because I've, I've been hearing about this for like a year. So show me. Yeah. She's like, I'll put up a camera and I'll show you. She would never show me. Oh. No, that's psycho. I'm sorry. You know, she's like, I would find like someone took their nail and put like X marks in the top of the lipstick. And I would find like the wax things hidden under things and stick it and just and this and that. And I'm just like, OK, <laughs> she never showed up to you. She never showed me anything yeah, because it never exists. That's something that she made up in her head. You know, don't to get keep, me long. I think so. keep her reeling in, you in, I think. I think maybe she thought maybe maybe I was, was wondering you liked. I don't know. No, I don't like, I don't like, I don't want to participate. <laughs> I don't have the energy. I don't care if she's sabotaging your makeup. I, I, whatever. <laughs> I just, sabotaging I, your makeup. Who has time for that? Get out of here with that stuff. You have to realize this is a hair salon and this is a room full of women with yeah. scissors. <laughs> with scissors. Oh, God. <laughs> just, oh my God. And they are sharp. And they are sharp. <laughs> You know, so who am I to say, <laughs> I just, you know, I just, uh, but what's interesting is my hairdresser now knew one of the hairdressers at that salons and she was like, oh my God, the drama there. <laughs> oh, wow. Can with a different stylist, in? with a different stylist. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Well, you know. Can you imagine going into work every day and just having all this drama? How much of a stressful life would you have every single day? It's just meaningless. It is meaningless. It is meaningless. You know, I used to, so, you know, I got this restaurant and everything, right? And and um, my family and I, you know, we opened it and everything and we did whatever we needed to do to start running it and stuff. And I used to work here uh, over maybe, I don't know, 10, maybe eight, 10 years ago, something like that. When I first started working here, I used it used to only be on the weekends, and it was just to help my cousin. And then I lost my job, and then I started working here more often, and then it was like seven days a week, and then it was like I'm responsible for everything, and so on. <laughs> kind of like so, now. <laughs> yeah, kind of like now. So I really enjoyed working because I got to see different people. Mm -hmm. I got to see um, and speak with people who were um, who would come in like, I don't know, two or three times like regulars who would come in mm -hmm. two or three times a week. And I would know what they want and we had to have good conversations and so on. But at the same time, um, it started building up drama in here. If it wasn't yeah. drama with the cook, it was drama with the dishwasher. If it wasn't them, it was somebody else. And then it, I just got to the point where I did not like working here. Yeah. I did not. Every day it was it's a toxic. hassle to get up. It's toxic. It is toxic. And it was toxic. So yeah, I mean, no. it's not, I tell them in the back now, like every once in a while, like I have a brother, sister that work here. Mm -hmm. So every once in a while they get into it or whatever. And I have to remind them, listen, first of all, I don't like drama up in here. Second of all, yeah. I'm not your mother. Yeah. 
You know, I'm yeah. not your mom. Go do, yeah. go fix this. And, and listen, there, one is 48 years old and the other one is 41 years old. Y'all yeah. ain't kids. I'm sorry, but y'all ain't kids. Well, this one was probably seven or eight years younger than me. Yeah. But she was fun and we, we got along. It was the, the, the drama and the stalking that was the issue for me. <laughs> I just, it's too bad, you know, really. It's too bad. You know, you, you could know. have had a really good friend in her if she was just. Oh, yeah, we were going to do a road trip and, and go check out some things because I'm like, I want to go do this. She's like, I'll go with you. That would be fun. You know, someone mm-hmm. who does that, who wants to do that and is OK with leaving the family and for a few days and going to do that. You know, I'm at a different stage than everyone else. My kids are grown, so I can go do that. Right. And I enjoy having the me time and doing that type of thing. You know, I've earned it. You know, there are things I miss at times, but that gets less and less, (laughs) believe it or not, as you get further away from it and life goes on, you know, so. Well, you have other, you have other experiences in your life too that come along that make you happy, Mm -hmm. just like the feelings that you, you know, had that you missed. So, Yeah. yeah, you know, so I, you know, it would have been nice to have her and have her nearby and, have those experiences like but it's just too much crazy for me I can't do Mm -hmm. I'm not wired that way I'm really not no I'm not either my experience now is if I moved to Florida I could just sit down on the beach relax with (laughs) with a I don't know a cooler full of stuff and just sit down and relax talk about stuff and not move right yeah, that's my I, happy experience now. <laughs> is that what you're going to try and do? I'm going to try and do that, yeah. No, yeah. I'm not. I'm just kidding. It's, gonna, it's not going to work. I have to come down. I got to work. I got to save some money, and then I could do that. Yeah, well, but I mean, just come to Florida in general. and. Oh, yeah, I'm trying. I'm trying. Whatever that path is, that path is, you know. Yeah, I'm trying. I'm, I'm trying to get my ducks in a row and then hopefully I'll go down there and oh it makes me happy you know I love Florida because it makes me happy I'm close to my friends I can go out I can have a good time I don't feel like I'm just doing the same old in and out thing every single well you day. you work all the time and and you're living life to do that essentially because you're not doing much else even on your day off your routine is the grandbabies maybe run to Jersey. Do you run to Jersey sometimes on oh, those days as well? Oh, not anymore. Thank God, not anymore. You know, so I mean, it's it becomes the same. Not that it's you a, want to take time from the grandbabies either. Don't get me wrong. I have one, um, one and a three quarters, and uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, but you know. It, you also have to do you. So you're working hard. This comes into the thing where if you're going to work hard, and I've told our one mutual friend, Crystal, you know, it's okay to buy the $200 purse. You'll be fine. <laughs> oh, yeah. You're not going to die. Don't worry about it. Well, you know, she, you know, yeah. when you go through hard times and you get used to budgeting and being everything on a budget, it's hard to take that step. Now, I do know how to take the step. <laughs> <laughs> I don't take Me it too. very often. But I do know how to take it, you know, so. Yeah. Well, you um, have to. You, you have to. You, you have can't to take reward that money yourself. with you. You cannot, you know, you can't take it with you. No, you, can't. you know, I intend on leaving some for my kids and that's set up. And what they get left is what they get left. They got to go and make a living. You know, I'm not setting them up for life. I'm going to, you know, I'm going to well, enjoy I what I can. Unfortunately, unfortunately, I don't got shit. So my daughter isn't getting anything. <laughs> I'm sorry, Maxine. I love you. Mommy loves you. Well, I didn't say they were getting a lot. <laughs> yeah. Mommy loves you, know. you, but she doesn't she doesn't but have a big bank account. <laughs> we're here for ourselves. This is our lives too. Yeah, it is. You it know. is. You know why? Because we've given so much to everyone else that it's our turn now to live. So and you know, to me, money, monetary value is nothing to me. I mean, yes. But you unfortunately need it. you need it because you yeah. have to be able to travel. <laughs> Well, that's what I mean. Like you do need it, but look, travel. So you save up so you can travel, but you're having mm-hmm. a good time with that money. You're not yes. just letting it sit in the bank or saving it or putting it to the side or what have you. And, and I'm don't not get saying, me wrong. Go ahead. You have, 
you have to save. You have to have, yes. you have to save. But if you're working six days a week, you do deserve to enjoy what you're working six days a week for. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yep. That money isn't going anywhere unless you use it for the things that you need to. You worked hard for it. You use it on yourself. Yep. You know, I mean, it's just life is short. Whatever makes you happy. Even if you use it on others and that makes you happy, then that's on you. So, you know, but make memories for yourself and do something. Have some adventures. That's why you're here. Yes, definitely. You know, you're not just here to work and slave away and make everyone else happy. They need to work and slave away and find their happiness and do for themselves. There's nothing wrong with instilling that in your children and doing that. No, not at all. I've always taught my daughter that from like day one. I've always told her to be independent, make sure that she has, you know, a good head on her shoulders um, never rely on anyone and, and do what she wants in life, you know? Yeah. And so far she's doing it, you know, to a minimum, to a maximum. I don't know. But, uh, right now it's, it's her turn. Like we all have a cycle and it's her mm-hmm. turn. You know, she has a husband, she has kids and, and she has to cycle. do that cycle because exactly. she, yeah, she, that's what she wanted to do. So right, that's what she yeah. chose. Yeah. Yep. She made the choice. So, you know, by all means, life is short. Go make some memories for yourself. Definitely. Don't wait until you're old and you can't move. you got to do it now while you're young. That is true. I ran into one of my old uh, nurses at the clinic. She comes in for her appointment yearly. She's 71. She looks fabulous. You would not think she's 71. And she looked at me. She says, you need to go travel. Yes. You don't know what diagnosis you're going to be handled to, handed tomorrow. You don't know. You just don't know what tomorrow is going to bring. And and as people are like, oh, I see that on those little memes or whatever all over Facebook or whatever those things are called. Uh, you know, but it's true. It is She's, true. It, she has friends that are her age that are just in terrible shape and can't travel. Yeah. Some can't leave their house. Yeah. She's like, go travel. And uh, I had a relative, they knew that he would be legally blind when he got older. They Mm -hmm. took out a loan and they did a huge trip and did a lot of traveling while he could still see. That's the way to do it. And then paid off the loan when he went blind because then that was that for traveling. You see? You know, yeah. So they lived it up. up, So he had those memories. Yep. And he could say, I saw that, you know, so a great story. That is though, that's a nice, that's a heartwarming story. It is. It is. And he got to do it. Unfortunately, uncle Harry passed away last January, but he had some great adventures more than one time out of the country or to several places that he loved and got to literally see and spend time and make friends. So he, he had a great time while he was able to. That's good. And I'm sure those memories stuck with him and he can visualize them inside his head oh, yeah. from, you know, what he had experienced. And that's, yep. that's great. You know, so all the cruises and going all the times they went to Germany and all that, they, they did all that multiple times because they knew later he wouldn't be able to. Yeah. So, you know, it's things like that because, you know, you're only here once and it goes quick, man. We're 50, Pascal. Oh my gosh, the year's almost over. It's like I was just in Florida visiting you, and I we're know. in December now. I know. Like, where's I the know. time gone? I'm like, wow, it's going to be know. New Year's before you know it. Uh, yuck. Yes, it is. <laughs> I know. <laughs> New Year's is my least favorite. I don't know why. I, I just, it doesn't do a thing for me. Is it really? That's like my, it's one of my favorites, I think, I because I make it a point on new year's eve that i get myself an outfit and i dress up in that outfit and then i have like i I don't need alcohol or none none of that stuff but i make it a point to dress nice put makeup on do stuff because i know that's what i like yep you know and to bring in the new year in i don't know um in a happy way i guess in a a happy excited way (laughs) How you see me tonight with my red top <laughs> and my Grinch pants and my Grinch socks <laughs> yeah. is how I will be <laughs> on the I'm couch 
watching a movie because that makes me happy. Yeah. See? Yeah. They each his own. They, everybody has their own happiness. Yeah. So. Yeah. yeah even know. to me, even like, um, what, a couple of years ago, even before I had um, the restaurant and everything like that, I would always make it a habit to dress up nice, get a good outfit. I'd go visit my cousin and they'd have like a, like charcuterie and, you know, stuff like that on the table and whatever, visit them for a little bit, go to somebody else's house for a little bit, do another thing for a little bit. It was just, to me, it's fun. I love doing that stuff. Yeah. That's fun. That would be yeah. fun. Yeah. yeah. No one here does that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, no one here is is doing that's that. okay yeah. if we go over there if i go over there then i'm gonna have a party at my house there you and go. you can come in your pajamas i just might <laughs> yeah you can come in your pajamas i just might you know yeah i'm just not a big party or drinker not like to be on the roads with the people who you know are learning <laughs> oh no well there's a lot of drinkers on the road that night too everybody's partying and having a good time i don't like to be on the road either but at least if i'm over there and you come in your pajamas you can spend the night because there's nobody there, you there. Go. there's nobody there that's right <laughs> works for me <laughs> yeah absolutely you know works for me so but that was all we were going to do this week we weren't going to do anything too too i don't know no i think involved. this was fun yeah, I think this was fun. How's your yeah. pretty blue drink? It's halfway gone. Halfway. It is halfway gone. Yeah, it's not too bad. It's It doesn't really, um, it doesn't hit hard, which is great. So yeah. actually so the really good. Eggnog's a little strong. <laughs> is it really? Yes. <laughs> Did it hit you yet? <laughs> it has. <laughs> and you're going to sleep really well tonight. <laughs> I will. <laughs> I think if yep. I I think if I have a couple more of these, I think I should be okay. Yeah. It'll hit me then. Then I'll really sleep. Right. Yeah. You know. But it was that's... it's a good drink. It's a good drink. I would recommend that to you guys if you wanted to go and get something, just a, a pretty cute drink. Pretty um, cute drink. Ask Ask Char for her a recipe for her eggnog. I don't know if she's willing to give it out. Or not. Are you willing to give it out? <laughs> Depends uh, on who it is. <laughs> No, it's okay. I get you because I'm like that with my food recipe. Yeah. <laughs> Somebody today was asking me, are you going to give out your recipe? And then I said, no, I really don't. And she's like, well, I don't live around here. I said, no, I really don't. <laughs> That's not my problem. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. I'm sorry you don't live around here. <laughs> right. Hi. She wanted sympathy. She wants. She was trying to swindle that recipe. That's what she was I, doing. That's exactly what she was doing. She was swindling anyway, it. I never had recipes anyway. It was just lucky for my daughter that she would put a pan under my hand every time I would season something. She created the recipes. So. Oh, that's cool. Yeah. That's the only I wish, way I could do it. I wish I had recipes. You can make your own. I can, but I I want what my mom did. Oh, you want what your mom did, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so. Well, I don't. why don't you try to, do you remember any of it? No. Um, you know, because she did all that when I was younger, and then when they got divorced, she really wasn't doing the entertaining and stuff, because she was working all the time. Oh, you were it totally young. changed the dynamics, and I was just too young, so. Okay, too. And the other sisters, Camille, she doesn't cook like that, uh. Everything of hers is processed and whatnot. And then Colette, well, Colette's no longer here. So, um, you know, yeah, it's just gone. Whatever all that was, was gone. Well, maybe you can look up some recipes on YouTube. and maybe I shouldn't, I need to make my own. I need to figure out some I was going to say and try to yeah. create your own. Yeah. Try to create my own. So, well, yeah. Well, believe it or not, like there's certain recipes, certain Lebanese recipes that I have watched my mom make never wrote down. I know the ingredients that go in them, but some of them are just hard. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> I just always, it, that ratio is important, that. is very important on it is some very, of them. It's very so, important, you know. I've learned it's, to watch five YouTube videos <laughs> and then put them all together <laughs> and create my own. 
you know, I, I bake. I love baking. If you know me at all, I love to bake. I cook. Yeah. I can cook. Sometimes the cooking's real lazy. Sometimes it's elaborate. just depends on the mood. I can cook. I love to bake. Okay. People are like, why don't you bake all the time? Well, I would be eating the crap all the time. <laughs> I don't want to eat. I don't exactly. want to eat it all, but yeah. I like to make it. And, um, well, and you so, go. you know, it's, and my daughter loves to bake. So she, oh, she has that. Yeah. She has that for me. And for my birthday, she would, you know, one year she made me different. Each layer of the cake was different. You know, she does, she, oh, she likes to, cool. yeah, yeah, she does. She likes to bake too. And she can cook as well, but she likes to, she loves to bake as well. She's so baker, yeah. she's the baker. And then there are people like, I just can't bake. I've never understood that because baking is actually a science. And so if you have a recipe and you don't deviate from the recipe. Right. Baking is very, it, baking is very precise. And like it has said. to be precise. Yeah. yeah. So I don't understand when people say I can't bake. Yeah. I truly don't. I like, because like, people are not patient. They're not following the recipe. They just want to kind of do it, whatever. That's probably what it is. Um, I mean, I'm so okay. afraid to screw it up that I follow all the recipes. You know, some I just know by heart, but, you know, so I just I never understood that. Oh, she can't bake anything. I'm like, yeah. how do you not bake anything? It's a because science. You have a patient. recipe. No, they're not patient with that recipe. I, believe it or not, have a hard time making dough i'm not really? a big dough maker no uh no i am not i couldn't bake bread for the life of me i'd probably starve to death from bread <laughs> because i couldn't make it if that was the last thing on earth i would just die <laughs> oh i am so i'm not so i did the whole sourdough thing last year and that's a labor of love because you got to make your starter and then you got to grow it and then you got to dump it and you got to feed it every day half and you got to feed it and got to dump and you gotta <laughs> then you have a starter. You gotta have enough air bubbles, and you gotta make your anyway. So you go through all that. Like so a I little that. shop of horrors. <laughs> yeah, it, it was two weeks of love. Let me tell you. Yeah. <laughs> so I found this other recipe I just did, and it's a no knead bread, no kneading, okay. except for you know you form it, and that's about it. It's delicious. It's crusty it's really and golden on the outside. And the inside is just tender and warm, and it's hot, and you're slicing off a slice, and you just put the butter, oh, it just melts right in. That. You stop it. <laughs> you're definitely Italian. 100%. <laughs> it just melts right in, and you just got to eat it. I don't care if it scorches your mouth. Oh it goes down. <laughs> yeah. Oh, that sounds fabulous. It was. <laughs> you know? But, the, the you know, it's just golden crusty. It was delicious. I was just, yeah. you know. Meantime, my son's eating, you know, these round, big loaves of bread, like they're going out of style because he's like, oh, this is good. <laughs> yes, yes. I think, I think my my daughter does the same. She feeds her little shop of horror <laughs> as well, but she's very patient with that. Like you are, you're very patient when it comes to well, for baking, I am very patient. Put me on the road behind someone slow, not so much. <laughs> or in the grocery show, shop, store, or any store with a shopping cart, and the people just stop in front of you, and you're like, really, really, really? <laughs> Pull off to the side and <laughs> get out of the middle of the aisle. I talk to myself the most. Like, oh. You can't move. You see me coming, right? <laughs> So like 10 of us behind you. You don't know that. <laughs> but when it comes to baking, I can be very patient. And I think um, uh, baking bread is mm -hmm. more patient than bake something else, cookies. Baking bread, because of the kneading and all of that stuff, requires a lot of patience, in yeah. which I have found that... <laughs> I need to be a little more patient with my, <laughs> with my dough. <laughs> Back in the day when my kids were little, I used to make homemade cinnamon rolls. Ooh, yum. So I'd make the dough, and you got to let it rise, and then you got to you know, pull out the dough, and then you got to yeah. layer the cinnamon and all that stuff in there, and then you roll it, and then you slice it, and then you let it rise again when it's all put together. <laughs> yes. That's, That's a labor see? of love, too. It yeah. is a lot of patience right there yeah and I, I had some have. big old cinnamon rolls with the glaze oh yeah <laughs> well hence why I call my sister to come and make my spinach pies and my meat oh, 
because that's she, what I want to do. Yeah, because she's very patient with the dough. And we it took us about I want to say three times to be able to get the dough recipe perfect the way the way it should be like for the spinach pie and the meat pies. The mm. first time, the first time we made it, you want to laugh? They look like fluffy pillows. <laughs> we had way too much yeast in there. <laughs> That yeast is very tricky. It is very tricky. Ye yeast is not always your friend. <laughs> no, that. and I never knew that it could die. It I'm does. like, what? It gets too hot. It dies. So. If it's not the right temperature, it doesn't bloom and do its thing. It's just temperamental jerk. I mean, it yeah. just, you know, you're yeah. off just a hair and it's it's out. <laughs> yeah. And that's why I we have, um, like the last time when I told her, I said, I think these pillows have too much yeast in them. <laughs> so the next time we cut it in half and then we did it. And I told her you can't, because we use milk in that too. So I told her mm -hmm. you can't heat up the milk too much, but you no. can't let it be cool either. So it has yeah. to be a little. Yeah. So um, we definitely got the microwave temperature down now, like for the timing and how long it should yeah. be. Yeah. Maybe that's what I should do tomorrow is make spinach pie, but mine mine would be different than yours. How would they be? I would use phyllo. Oh, phyllo dough. Yeah, mm -hmm. like spanicopita. Like spanicopita. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, mine is dough dough. <laughs> yeah, and and that, that uh, phyllo dough, dough is, can be a little temperamental. The key to that, lots and lots of butter. Butter. And I mean drowning. The layers are drowning in butter. I melt so much butter and I just, yeah, lots that's, and lots of butter. That's one thing my mother taught me when we were making baklava. When she was teaching me how to make baklava, she always said you have to layer each layer and you have to work fast mm -hmm. with that feeling. Yep, there. you do. But I found a trick. <laughs> I don't have to layer each layer. <laughs> <laughs> Yes. <laughs> but man, when you do and you get all that butter in between each layer, it's, it's just so, oh yeah. So, you know, that's, yeah. Yum. Oh, okay. Next time I'm down, you're going to have to make one of those for me. Do you make them big? I actually make it in pan. <laughs> Oh, you make it like in a pan and then you I have it. made them in triangles. Um, the recipe is my friend's recipe and she's Greek. Okay. And um, so I use her recipe. She gave she was nice. She gave me her recipe. Yeah. <laughs> and um, and the first time out the gate, I got it right. I was so I was proud of myself because I was so worried about the dough because she was lecturing me about the dough. I was like, okay, <laughs> I'll get it. I got the dough. <laughs> what but, number yeah. do they use? What number do they use phyllo dough for that one? Is it a number Wait. ten? It's it's just whatever. It's just one. There's it's no number. Mm -hmm. oh, okay, when well, I pick some up, I will send you a picture and then you can tell me because I okay. th there's no numbers. There was no discussion of numbers. So oh, you okay. have different numbers. Yes, there are different numbers. They range really? from I believe, one to ten. And uh, one being the thinnest type of phyllo dough that you can buy, ten being a thicker. This so is thin. I use, yeah. Oh, this thin? Is your, Maybe this it's is in the thin. middle. This is like almost see through -y. It's thin. Okay. Yeah. It's very thin, very light, and you're trying to hurry and not tear, and you're trying to get it. So then it's, it's probably one of the lower numbers then. Yeah, it's thin, but it, it doesn't, I don't recall it saying on the box. Yeah. The, they, um, yeah. the number 10, which is the highest one, I believe, uh, if I'm not mistaken, um, that one actually I use for one of my um, desserts here because yeah. it holds it holds its shape. Gotcha. Um, I did not know that phyllo dough was numbered. That's interesting. Yeah, yeah. phyllo dough is numbered. I just went to the store and bought it in the box, and they only have one yeah. <laughs> box. It's not like I had choices, so right. I did not know that. That's interesting. Yeah. Yeah. Mm, I'll have to remember that. Keep yeah, an eye you out. Make a but... dessert out of out of uh, the phyllo dough too. I think you mm -hmm. would like that. Maybe I'll send you the recipe for that. What it's is your... it? You're super patient with it, so I think you're going to get it right in the first shot. I'm not, and then you'll have to tell me. <laughs> what is it? So it's phyllo dough, and it's um, into. they're cut into triangles, but they're also layered exactly like mm. the Copita, um, except it has like, um, it has like a, like a, almost a creme fraiche mm -hmm. inside. 
Ooh. And that creme fresh actually has um, a little bit of rose water, orange blossom water, and a little bit of sugar to it. Oh, um, so like you pre cook it before. Yeah. Like that. Yeah. But you, I think you would be very patient. With that. I sometimes take puff pastry and roll it out and fill it with chocolate and bake it. <laughs> Yum. Why not? Yeah, why not? <laughs> Did you ever see them make the puff, the pastry? The filo dough? Did you ever watch? I, no. It's very, very. So they have this one gigantic room, okay, that mm -hmm. and these tables that are super duper long, almost like a, like you're cutting um, yards and yards of uh, uh, fabric, mm -hmm. almost similar to that. And um, there's cornstarch all over the place. So it's like, and then you have to dress up from like head to toe in these like hazmat suity thingies. Gotcha. Yeah. And, um, and then they I bet I would out. have fun in there. I would have fun too. I, I would have fun in there. I would like that. <laughs> they roll it out and then yeah. they layer it back up and then they roll it out and then they layer it back up and then they roll it out again. And then they keep rolling and rolling and rolling until it, that thing gets to the thickness that they want it to be with those That's numbers crazy. that I, that I mentioned. Good God, I feel sorry the person has won. <laughs> yeah, but that's how you that's how you would do it homemade. I thank would like God. I'd like number ten. <laughs> yeah. I mean, thank God I can buy it in the store. That's so that's how you would do it at making it homemade. I wonder how, how yeah. small of a batch I could try that on. You could probably yeah, try it. Look up a YouTube video on that. You can make a small one. I have to think about that. Yeah, it's going to take some time, so make sure you have enough time. <laughs> <laughs> two days. You're going to need two days. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, so, but like, Well, you're Italian, so it's like making spaghetti, but thinner. <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah, that's it. It's making homemade spaghetti just thinner. Just thinner. Oh, oh. I, I do want to make homemade raviolis. I haven't done that yet. No, you haven't? What, could, what would you put in it? I'd, I'd make a variety. I would make a variety. So I've had butternut squash in there. I bet that's good. That is delicious. I've also had pumpkin. I was going to say, yeah. And edamame. Oh, that's interesting. Yes. The edamame? I did, you, mm -hmm. Fabulous. Fabulous. Really? It was so delicious. did they puree that? or? Yes. So they cook it and then they puree it and then they... They I guess season it. it the way they want to season it when you're Correct. pureeing it. Okay. Yeah. Okay. And then you just put it in. You put puree it, in. it. Not not like um. Not it's thicker. Thicker. It's a yeah, thicker. Like yeah. Yeah. Like a pudding. Yeah. Because yeah. of the dough, you can't have it real liquidy anyway. So, um, yeah. See, I would do like a. I love spinach. I would do a spinach one. Cheese. Have a veggie one, cheese one, meat one. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Edamame, I would have never felt thought of. Yeah, that was new to me. I was like, what's in this ravioli? They're like, edamame. I'm like, get out. Because <laughs> it does not taste like edamame. I love edamame. I love edamame. Yeah. Yes. Mm -hmm. but, it does, but it didn't taste, I think, because of all the spices and probably garlic and stuff like that that they put in. Yeah, um, garlic. They pan, and they pan seared it, actually. They didn't even like. I pan sear ravioli. Yeah, they didn't even mm -hmm. put it in like boiling water. So. Yeah, yeah, I've done I like both. Like pierogies too. Pierogies, I want to. I do love that. pierogies. Yes. I could eat those forever. Yeah, I know. Gosh, <laughs> there's a there's a pierogi grill. Um, I guess that's kind of considered clear water. Did I tell you this? What was in my no. tea? No. no. I loved pierogi grill. I actually had been there once not too long ago. I took Danny because I hadn't been there in so many years. And the reason I had not been there in so many years is I got my pierogies and I got my iced tea and I was happy, happy, happy. <laughs> oh, and no. I'm eating my pierogies and I'm drinking my iced tea. And then I go to take a sip of my iced tea and I look at the glass. I'm like, Oh, that's a baby roach stuck to the inside oh, no. of the glass, which you couldn't see because of all the ice prior. So I was down. It oh, was God. one of those red plastic glasses, you know, like the oh. old Coca-Cola glasses. It was one of those. 
and I was down several inches <laughs> before you could, I, I mean, I physically saw him because it got below the line, you know, got below the brooch. And oh, so God. the waiter came and I was just like, hand him my glass. I'm like, look, and they're like, oh my God. <laughs> so I hadn't been back in years because of that years. And oh. I know this is Florida and I know we have critters, but he was in my ice. <laughs> Uh, and it totally creeped me out beyond I like I've been drinking roach tea <laughs> <laughs> so gross. Ew. It was him. oh god he was like hello I'm here <laughs> peeking out through the through the iced tea it was speaking awful. of roaches I was I like I'm done I'm on a diet I don't blame you now you make pierogies at home. No. <laughs> right. Speaking of roaches, so when I make my tea Florida, at home, <laughs> yes, definitely take it with you. Put right. it in your purse. Right. What's in your cup? It's my own tea. Damn it! Yes. Don't ask. <laughs> and don't give me ice from you. I got it. Thank you. <laughs> got a cooler in the trunk. I'm fine. Yeah, exactly. So when I lived in Florida, obviously, like you said, their roaches are prevalent. Um, so my, we make these sandwiches called aru sandwich. So it's made out of these big, large pita breads that are about 12 inches bit, you know, round. And then you separate them and then you make your sandwiches. So my mom, one day she was making her sandwich and then she put it on the counter and then oh, no. she came up to take a bite. Oh and, no. <laughs> and the roach crawled out of it. <laughs> oh no. And she, whatever bite she had in her mouth, she spit it the hell oh, out. She was yeah. like, that is awful. Yeah, that no. Awful. Yeah. Roach sandwich. Yeah, no. Yeah. <laughs> no, no, no. That's and why, what, that's why here at the restaurant, I am very particular. I have a guy that comes in here every single, I'm going to say every two weeks. He comes and he sprays and he does all that he needs to do because here we have a lot of ants. We don't have so much roaches, but we have a lot of ants. And um, we do have roaches, though. Don't get me wrong. They do live here, too, in Pennsylvania. <laughs> and, but I make sure that he sprays everything and everywhere. And, and if I see something, I always look in people's cups before I give it to them. Because if I see something that I don't like, I'm not going to give it to you. Today, that's funny you said that, because today, one of my cups has an actual imperfection inside the glass mm -hmm. so it's it looks like it's dirty or it looks like there's like something in it but it's not you can't take it out it's like <laughs> embedded in the ground in the glass it, it's an imperfection yeah so I gave yeah. it to the girl and I told her I said honey this is embedded in the glass there's nothing floating in your water <laughs> like, I just want you to know that you don't have a roach waving at you with this little antenna thing. <laughs> You're like, hey. <laughs> oh. Yeah. That that ruined uh that restaurant. Your pierogies. I yeah. did. I mean, oh. I would probably try to go back, but there would be a um hard ex inspection of the glass. <laughs> yeah, definitely. Be there with the straw going <laughs> moving the ice. No around. kidding. No kidding. It was plastered to the side of the cup. Ugh. Ugh. Yeah, no, bring your own drink. Yeah, so <laughs> I had roach tea and it was not good. No. <laughs> just... uh, uh, it's okay. It's probably nothing different than Japanese people eating whatever or Asian people. Some of the Asian people, I can't say all of them, but some Asian people, you know, try stuff like scorpions and and I don't know what else. You know, I just I, I know things go on in all different cultures. And all yeah. around the world. And I know some of the older fashion people in the cultures have stuck to certain what I consider very barbaric <laughs> things. Yes. Um, but, you know, I have my I have I have my dogs and um, I have my Malinois, my Belgian Malinois. Or I have one. And um, so I follow this lady on Instagram and she has two. And do you know that she rescued both of them from a meat factory in China? Oh, get out of here. Did and I want really? you to know, and I want you to know the one she rescued during COVID. So she doesn't have that one that long. Oh, wow. And the other one is older and, and they're like, we don't even know what trauma she had to her face, but they've had to find specialists here to help fix her snoot and face. Yeah. And they saved her. And, and of course they come, you know, because of the, I just can't. 
I no. just, th- I, these are, no, 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 no. Nope. <laughs> I just can't. No to animals. Except no. cows. <laughs> no, I and just. And lambs. <laughs> And chickens. <laughs> uh, Belgian Malinois are off the table, literally, literally off the table. Wow. <laughs> Just, Why would they, they eat that? Why would they eat I, dogs? I, they I, don't have any other food. I don't know. I. They have. They have other food. Come on now. I. <laughs> I just, I have, I don't know. No, I mean, I like, I'm like. And they're very, and they're, and they follow those groups and they're like, we'll rescue another one. But they wait a few years. They got to get acclimated. They have a lot of adjustments. They have healing to do because some of it's abuse and stuff. And, and of course, just being, waiting for a meat factory, just caged and in conditions that are not healthy for any living thing. Uh, Yeah, just no, no, no. No, no I, I respect everybody's way of eating and everybody's way of living, but but not at my there's, house. <laughs> no, there's, there's a line to be drawn no. um, for things. So. Yeah. Yeah. That. No. no. <laughs> yeah. So people are like, oh, that doesn't exist. I'm like, oh, I beg to differ. Oh, no, it exists. It exists. Yes. If you think it doesn't, you're you're putting blinders on. It exists. It yeah. exists. I have a, a friend and he's got a, a girlfriend and she's, she's Asian and he, and she lives with him. <laughs> and he's like, I'm so grossed out by the chicken feet in the refrigerator. I tell her she has to put them in the oh back. I don't want to see them. Yeah. <laughs> I'm like, yeah, that's kind of repulsive. <laughs> yeah, they have fingernails. I, they have okay. Nails. <laughs> just, just, oh my God. Yeah. I'm not, I'm not a fan of those either. You know, my no. friend, my friend, the one who that you met, um, her mom, she's Korean. She loves um, chicken feet. So one mm-hmm. year when I had visited Florida, this was ages ago, we had went to an all-you-can-eat buffet uh, somewhere. I don't know where it is. And they had chicken oh. feet things. So no. here she goes putting them on her plate. Oh. Her, but not saying a word, okay? No, because you can't just, say a word, yeah. But then I asked my friend, you know, on the drive, well, when she was in her own home, I asked her, I'm like, do you eat chicken feet? <laughs> Just a question. She's like, oh, God, no, I hate those damn things. <laughs> Right, and it's not you. making fun of anybody or anything. No, no. That's just not our world. That's not here. And it's not ever going to be at my house. And do not eat my Malinois. That's all I got to say. <laughs> I just know. I mean, so, it was her norm. It was her norm. That's the way she was brought up. That was her mom's norm. Was- yeah. Well, this, this girl is probably a few years older than us. And um, she's been here for a while. But, you know, she works in a industry where they're all they all speak Cantonese and they're all you know yeah and whatnot so it's you know uh, well at least she rescues them so that's good yeah well two well it's okay two is you know better than none so. Yeah, I just can't even think about it. I just, yeah. mm, no. I also asked, when do you start your Christmas shopping? Because I was just curious. It's the holiday time. Everyone's, you know, trying to get it together. It is, yeah. Well, when do it you is. start? Don't ask <laughs> me. My answer is the day before, but don't ask me. Back in the day when I was with it and my kids were younger and I knew exactly what they wanted, I would start. I would be done by the time December 1st came. I usually would be done by Thanksgiving and start wrapping that weekend and have the gifts wrapped in under the tree. So um, needless to say, it hasn't been like that for a long time. And um, so the last few years or so, longer than that, I like when I when they finally tell me, like when da- my daughter last year was like, I want a Banana Republic gift card it was one of her gift cards she wanted. So I ran and got the banana public gift card. I did that probably the week before. Okay. Yeah, no, but it was a gift card. Right. You know, she, she also wanted a Victoria's Secret gift card. I had already gotten that when I went to Victoria's Secret for myself. So I got her that, you know, so, you know, they, they're at the age where they like to pick their own things, but they're specific about their stores they shop at. And so I buy them as they pop in with the you know recommendation it is hard for the baby this year I did it last year too but this year is going to be fun with him because he now knows how to unwrap and he knows what unwrapping is all about so I've been picking up 
stuff for him for the last few months. Okay. Not a lot of things, but I order a little something here, a little something there. He might have gotten a few things early. <laughs> sure. Because plus- <laughs> when he comes here and she takes toys home that he likes, then <laughs> there's nothing here. Then I'm just giving him one that's here, you know. So, right. so yeah. So I pretty much have his big stuff done and um, won't be wrapped because I'm not wrapping a slide. And so, <laughs> you know, uh-huh. you no, know, no. But, yeah. So, and then I'll well, be getting him jammies kids, and stuff, you know. Yeah, little kids that age are a lot easier to get for because you know you they can are pick those things. They're yeah fun. It's fun. It's it's fun, and I have a good time, and it becomes kind of drab with everyone else. Uh, one of our friends put after Christmas, and another friend responded to that, going, "Isn't that late?" And she's like, "No, I mean for next year." <laughs> oh, so she wow. starts picking up odds and ends gift sets. Yes. Okay. To start his year. Yeah. Uh, someone else posted, I haven't started. Someone else put December 20th. And then someone responded to that going, is that all gift cards? And they're like, pretty much. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. Some, someone posted, I try to start in November, but by the time I keep asking everyone and they actually give me their lists, I start early to mid December. Um, I'm that person. I'm that, I'm like her. Because you know what? I asked my sister-in-law, like, what do the kids need? You know, I have four um, nieces and nephews that are young. They're all under, they're 11 and all the way down to, like, soon to be three. So they have the world at the house. Like, so what can I get them? You know? I I don't, last year, last year, yeah, I think they had asked for Hershey Park tickets for like all year round yeah so um i my dad and i actually split that because they're very expensive i and, bet yeah and we got them that for christmas um so i usually do it i i maybe i don't know maybe the second week of december i start it just it just depends on what they need like one year my son i forget what he wanted or needed and he needed it early and i'm like james this is a hunk of money and he's like i know he goes it could be my christmas gift i said okay well i'm gonna feel bad for you on christmas he's like don't i need this so i did whatever it was he wanted and he got it and he was thrilled and then for christmas i filled his stocking stuffers you know stockings with little stuffers you know like yeah. placement heads for his toothbrush things that he doesn't like to spend money on for himself that he needs <laughs> he doesn't want he doesn't like buying necessities so I always end up doing it and trying to supply him for the year so that makes him happy this year he's asking for the basics underwear work socks regular socks he's not asking for anything spectacular and Brooke will want the you know gift cards to her favorite stores um, another person put usually November December we don't buy a lot of gifts so it's not too bad Another one posted, uh, she placed her last Amazon order and wrapping is almost done. She's happy to be done. Someone else posted, I shop all year round. I had someone else tell me that they shop all year round because they travel every week for work. And so they pick up stuff throughout the year for things they see for people that are unique gifts. So she's like, I'm done. I pick up things all year. I see them for each person. Um, I'm ready to mail a wrap by Thanksgiving. That and that's because like she, she, yeah, that would be fun. She travels every week. Uh, some people wrote specific dates like December 22nd. Someone else wrote, I'm almost done. Someone wrote three months ago. Someone wrote in June. Um, <laughs> Rudy, who is um, kind of related to me through marriages uh, on my side of the family, his niece and nephew are my cousins. Um, he's like, as soon as my sister has time, in other words, he tells her. <laughs> Here, go shopping oh. for them for me. I'm That's like, get it done, dad. Rudy. And he's like, nope. <laughs> my dad was the same way. My mother would always <clears throat> ask him for money. And then she would like, oh, I need the money for the kids, you know, to go shopping. And and then she would buy a Christmas present from him to her. And she would wrap it up and put it under the tree. <laughs> That's nice. I like that. Yes. Yes. That's nice. I like that idea. Um a couple of people posted they start in October, and someone posted, I'm a guy. I'm starting in three weeks. <laughs> <laughs> starting the night before. <laughs> yeah. 
I've done that. I'm not going to lie. There's I've, I've, I've run out a few times. I, you know, it's like, oh, I forgot. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah, me so, yes. too. And then if, if I know I'm not going to see that specific person um, probably until after Christmas, I'll probably go Christmas shopping the day after. The and day pick after. something up for them, yeah. Well, I just buy for the kids and... Um, yeah, so it includes I'd, the grandbaby. So, you know, I don't do a whole heck of a lot anymore. And of course I buy for um, a few friends, but that's about it. Yeah. Yeah. I buy um, usually just for the kids, my, my brother's kids and my grandbabies. And then um, I usually ask my dad for something and then I'll get something since my mom passed, I get something on his behalf for them. And then, um, that's about it. I tell everybody yeah. not to get me anything because I don't need anything. Yeah. I have everything already and I really don't need anything. So, but what would you want? I don't know. That's it's not about need. Just, you know, something yeah. that you wouldn't buy for yourself. What would you want? I don't know. I'd have to think about that to be honest. I really don't have a quick answer for that. Yeah. I don't know what I would want. I would want a vacation, I think. Oh, I'm right there with you. But if anything, actually, you know what? What I would probably want is maybe a gift certificate for a good massage. That's probably what I would really want. I love a good massage. Yeah, because I don't yeah. get them very often. Yeah. Did you get a facial appointment yet? No. When do I have time to do that? Oh, you got to make speaking, time. Speaking of facials, so I did buy this new um, <laughs> thing. It's called Blue Mean or Blue Meanie or something like that. I don't know what it's. It's B-L-U-M-E-N-E, okay? Okay. And what, it's, what it does is um, it's curved like a C like this, and then it's, mm -hmm. you can hold it in your hand. It's like an egg, Okay. And um, it has three different lights on it, okay? So one light, uh, one is blue, one is green, and one is red. Red. And, yes. And one of the lights you can use, like, for example, um, to get rid of wrinkles or to lessen your wrinkles. You're not going to get Light therapy. Wrinkles. You're doing yeah. light therapy. Light therapy, yeah. You have to let me know how you like that. So far, I've been using it, and I... I mean, I like it. It makes a difference, I think. So the red light, because Crystal joined a club or a group or a spa or something, and they do red light therapy. Okay. And they put your whole body in there. So while all that stuff has its benefits, like to me, it's not worth paying monthly for it. No, this one. I. I, I just don't need uh, it for anything. Yeah, yeah, it wasn't it wasn't expensive, and I thought I'd buy myself an early Christmas present. Speaking of that, <laughs> yes, right. So it wasn't very expensive, um, and oh, also it's supposed to um, decrease the or it's an anti aging type of thing, and then it also the, gets used for acne if you have acne. Yeah, the different colored lights. Yes. do different things so my esthetician offers light therapy and stuff I have not done it yet um not that I won't uh it makes you feel good to be honest I feel like I I I am one of those people that likes to be in the sun I like the sun to hit my face um if there's no sun you know it's like you get in this depression mode and stuff well, like that for people that live up north, definitely. I've, yeah. yeah. So after I use it, I usually use it after work when I go home and I'm sitting in my bed. But you can put it in your purse. You can carry it anywhere. It's lightweight. Um, and all you do is charge it up. Once it's charged up, you can use it anywhere. You can use Blue it on Me the Face go. Pro. Yes. Blue Me Face Pro. Do you see it? I do. Yeah. It's really good. I like it. I, I'm enjoying it, actually. I also got another um, item. It's um, it's laser therapy for anybody who has facial hair. It um, says uh, thermal and vibration technologies. Oh, yes. It does vibrate. Yes. 
Yeah, but it's really nice. Interesting. Go on. What else did you get? Um, let me look it up here real quick, and then I can give you a little bit more detail on it. Okay, so it's called uh, Laser Lipo by Sono Bello. Bello, or Bello. Hmm. Bello. So it's kind of like a like a laser therapy basically for your face. Um, if you have any any specific hair or anything that you want to get rid of. And I, uh, ever since I had my daughter, my hair under my chin <laughs> seems to be growing. <laughs> And uh, yes, yes, ladies, it does happen. So it does happen, right? So um, I had uh, Tasha was what is that where they take the needle across your face to m remove all the peach fuzz? Oh yes, um, abrasion. Micro, my, is it micro Micro abrasion. Micro abrasion. Uh, well, there's one that's done with the facial machine, and there's anyways. She was. This is a blade, and she left me a mark over here oh, on my face. Oh yes. And she says, "Well, I used oil and stuff." I said, "Never again." You talked me into it. I didn't want to do it. Yeah. You know. Well, I use those at home actually. I use those you know. at home, and I have them. But what I do is I apply um, albaline on mm -hmm. them which is kind of almost like a vaseline on your face mm -hmm. i do that and then i just kind of go down with the blade mm -hmm. and then um, they say usually supposed to follow your hair not against the follicle um it does remove dirt because i found that especially being you know around the grill all oh, day God, long, yes yeah yes I have a lot of dirt stuck under my skin. So it does remove a lot of dirt. That's for sure. I try to do that like once a week. Do you? I do. Well, I'm not brave to do it on myself. So I don't know. But yeah, she did something to me. <laughs> 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 yeah, it's really it's really not too bad. But but if you're not careful, you will cut yourself because those blades are sharp as anything can be. Yeah, she uh, she didn't cut me. There was no bleeding, but there was a mark. And she just could not believe she left that mark. And she's like, yeah, you didn't have that before. I'm like, no, I didn't. Yeah. Yeah. Did not have it. And I guess what? Not having it ever again. <laughs> I know. You know. Well, well, that's scary. Some of those things, sometimes I often wonder, like I'm putting a light to my face. Is this really good for my face? Well, and then I, what's the long-term effects of it? How long has it been really studied that they know the long-term effects when you, you know, it's got to be a different light than say a sunbed exactly and, and that's cancer what I mean. you know and stuff like that but I don't believe in doing anything that you don't absolutely have to do right. like if you suffer from some kind of like something on your face psoriasis or, or whatever eczema something and yeah. you do light therapy to help it and stuff but like I don't think like I absolutely need to have it yes at I at this stage I of the game it, I wanted it because um I get a lot of acne and I have a lot of yeah. hair. I don't know why it's like, I feel like I missed my younger days or something. Like in my younger days, I didn't get the, this much acne that I used to get. But like I said, being in the, under the grill. It's all, all that grease. Day, it's clogging it, you. It's clogging yeah. you and creating all kinds of havoc on your skin. So that's why I go get facials once a month. And everyone's like, oh, a lot of people probably think, oh, that's pretty vain. I started getting facial because I had melasma. Actually, I got the melasma. It popped out in my 30s, and I kind of treated it with chemicals. I really don't like treating my skin with chemicals. Right. So um, I discovered that when I met the crazy esthetician, I talked to her about doing organic and different things, and she laughed at me. And then she ended up switching all to organic, and she's like, this is the best stuff. So I've I've learned how to treat my skin organically and control the melasma where I'm not having the dermatologist call a script into the compounding pharmacy and this $120 tube of chemicals is being shipped to me and putting it on my face, you know, I just, and then I can't go in the sun. I can't do certain things because they're chemicals. And I'm just like, I'm not, I'm in Florida. I'm a water person. I'm not, I'm not living. No, I'm not doing this. So if you go to a, get a facial once a month, it's big cell turnover. Yeah. 
And that's why that's I do what it. I want. And that that's controls I do. the sunspots, the melasma, the acne. Yeah. Um, I used to have bigger pores. I don't now. Oh, maybe I should. It, start it does it. all of that. I go once on a month. Monday. So once people, month. it's not about vanity. I'm like controlling. I went to the dermatologist on, on Halloween. I actually saw her. She's like, oh, you're doing a great job of controlling everything. See you in two years. I'm like, bye. <laughs> you know? there you go. Well, you how know? often do you wash your face? You wash your face, obviously, in the morning when you get up. but Twice a day. Like, twice a day. Okay. Mm-hmm. See, I have a bad habit. I don't really wash my face twice a day, which I should be doing that. But so I use um, at twice a day, I use a little bit of castor oil mm-hmm. with a little DermaQuest cleansing oil. I mix it together and I wash my face with that. I'm really oily and oil cancels oil. So by washing with that and, and whatnot, I'm not as oily as I used to be. Okay. You know, and that, too. that's a good yeah. tip. So oil cancels oil. Yeah. Um, I use a lot of AA, AA. A H A products, L H A products too. That helps with melasma. Okay. Um, it's high exfoliating stuff. I use um, a scrubbing exfoliator. I okay. use. I have I a two different kinds. Too. I have a vitamin C one that okay. also controls spots and you know vitamin C lightens and brightens and stuff. So I I use a few different products. They're kind of higher end products. They last a long time. I don't use lotion on my face. I use hemp oil and I add essential oils and I make my own. And it's inexpensive and it's healthier and my skin's never look so good. Oh, <laughs> and not that it's perfect, but I struggled with things growing up and I don't do that anymore. Yeah. I struggle with a lot of hair growth. So and yeah. that's why I kind of invested in in the laser. Um actually I know the one that I mentioned before, that's not the one that I got. The one that I got actually is called Snowy Skin Laser Hair Removal. And um, it is supposed to deliver and reduce hair growth in about four to five weeks. You use it once a week and it um, targets certain follicles and deeper follicles that you have. It will not remove gray. And it doesn't work well with so it's like with darker skin. Yeah. So when I went to a laser hair removal thing, it doesn't remove gray and darker people, darker skin. It it has. Yeah. And that's the whole laser thing. So, yeah. yeah. I mean, yeah. I do have some gray, but the majority of the hair that is growing around that area is, um, is uh, you know, regular hair color, my regular hair color. And yeah. so I'm hoping that it will decrease it. I've used it for two weeks now, so I haven't quite reached the, the four to five week mark just yet, but I'll keep you guys um, informed and see. And I also just want to say, I'm not picking on anyone who does these things. I do different things. Pascal does different things. Yeah. I just try to, for me, I try to do as much as I can at home for myself and more within what's more of a necessity than extra because at some point if you need that it won't be the same you know what i'm saying oh yeah definitely of course yeah you know won't be the same yeah and and you know like you said everybody has their own way of dealing with their own skin and their own anyone can sell you anything Oh, yeah, of course. But there's nothing, if it's not more medically ne- necessary. So the Absolutely. thing with the melasma for me, when it came out, it came out of my cheeks. It looked like someone put dark rouge on me. And at the time, my sister had passed. And one side effect of her kidney disease was her skin on her face darkened. So mm-hmm. I was, I was, yeah, I was like, what is this? Scared. I mean, it just all, it yeah. freaked me out. And I ran to my dermatologist at the time who worked in the building. I just ran it over to her. When I, this is when I worked in the old building at the clinic and we had a dermatologist. She's like, you're fine. This is not what your sister had. You have this. You're okay. I promise. <laughs> you know, she just looked at me because she knew. And I was like, what is going on? You know? And so, yeah. So, um, well, if I can I have control that. Face. Yeah. Yeah. I, I have I that right sun. here. Right yeah. here. Yeah. I go out in the sun and it's triggered by heat, not even necessarily getting the sun rays. It's triggered by just getting hot, that it will darken, that if I can go to the dermatologist and she's like, you don't need anything from me. You've done a great job. And I've been out jet skiing and stuff. I think I've done a pretty good job. 
Yeah. You know, oh, I rather Maybe. I rather buy a red light and do red light therapy at home than pay right. a yeah, membership and, and be. I just just don't do that stuff unless it's more medically necessary. And again, that's well, not, not. Yeah, I'm not going to pay for that like that is on a monthly basis either. And that's why I try to find like these things sometimes. Um, but I'm more like you. I'm homeopathic where like I'd rather do something from home um, instead of doing something monthly. Um, and that's why I bought the the snowy skin. Um, I've suffered with this hair since my God, I was since I had my daughter, my daughter, I was 21, 20, 21. So I've suffered with it for like since I was 22 years old. Mm -hmm. I have tried everything homeopathic to try to get rid of it and yeah has well sometimes it's not i mean it's it has its place yeah homeopathic so, uh, stuff has its place and then there's a time where you have to step it up so i don't get me wrong you do what you need to do for you you know yeah. i just find for me i'm not going to commit to something that isn't I don't have anything I have to absolutely treat or deal with right now. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. I've got the melasma under control. Most people don't even know I have it unless I tell you I have it, but I, I do a pretty good job of controlling it. So, you know, I, from there, I don't really have any issues. I mean, there's a lot of benefits to everything in the world. Um, go out and get some regular sun. Yes. Take care of yourself the best that you can. And uh, yeah, I mean, it is what it is. It's going to be what it's going to be. That's all you can do. Yeah, that's you know. right. Yeah. But that's it, I think my dear. We, yeah, same here. I think we had a great conversation though this um this time around. I mean we always do any time around, but this time around I think we just kind of you know went did our thing. Yeah, kind of went with the flow. Thing. I did ask a few questions online. It wasn't anything uh I don't know. Probably need a better question. <laughs> Well, no, that's okay. I, I mean, I think you hit um, a couple of the points and a couple of points we did talk about, um, you know, people have experienced and have come across in their life. So I think they were, they were good questions, to be honest. So, you know, I haven't found one yet that you haven't had a good question on. So. I appreciate I that. I do try. I would tell you. <laughs> she would. Yes, I would. And you all would hear it. <laughs> She'd be like, what were you thinking? Yes. <laughs> what kind of question was that? Why would you even ask that? Because <laughs> yeah, so I was just being far, nosy. Eh, so far, I think everything, um, everything we've always experienced, you know, and I think it not just us, other other people as well, mm -hmm. have experienced things that you, the questions that you've asked already, so. You know, I think it hits home. I try. Yeah. So this is stuff you and I just talk about in general all the we time. We do, right? We do. We do which is how time. this came to be for me. Yeah. As, you know, I was thinking about it. So, yeah, you know, we just kind of talk about everything oh all the gosh, time. Oh, my gosh, I think we can talk forever, to be honest with you. <laughs> well, we're, we're, at our, we're at our longest. We're at two hours and 12 minutes right oh now. Oh, my gosh. Yes, we are. I just looked up. Yeah. Wow. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, so uh, we just had that connection. We always have. Yeah, we did. We did. You know, it's not forced. It's not faked. And, you know, if you ever need me, where to find me? Yep, same here. Same here. Of course. Here. Cold up here, though, but I don't know. Hey, I have a new jacket <laughs> I bought today. <laughs> oh, yay. I went to Costco. Yes. Which, first of all, don't do that on a Saturday mid-morning because, oh, oh, good Lord. <laughs> I had to park almost a mile away, but oh, like, not during the holidays. Not during <laughs> oh, the holidays. I know. And, you know, I prefer to do it like after work, like on a Tuesday. When nobody's around. When no <laughs> one's around. It's after work. It's quiet. <laughs> and they're not giving out a sample of everything. And there aren't lines for the samples. I'm like, God, did you eat? You can eat at home. You know, you have to come here. No, uh, some people go and have their lunch there. <laughs> oh, God. I was just trying to get through the aisle. I was just like, I just want to get through the aisle. Let me through the aisle. Just please. Okay, I got to go around. Oh, wait, I can't get down this aisle either. <laughs> Hold on. <laughs> you, know, like, <laughs> you know, it was the quickest 320 bucks I've spent in a while. <laughs> oh, my gosh. <laughs> easy to do easy well except for do. buying that blue purse but that's a whole other topic and that was a while yeah. ago but so yeah it's a heavy yeah. duty jacket 
it well it goes down pretty cold but it's light and that's what i needed i wanted to get rid of some of i've actually got rid of some of my heavier older jackets last year yes and then i'm like ah, do i really need a jacket i you know at work i get out and i run into the stairwell and yes all that's cold and i run down the stairs so i don't take the elevators at work and um then I go into the building and that's cold too. And then I go back to my cubicle and that's cold as well. But then I have a small <laughs> heater under my desk that I can turn on <laughs> and uh, <clears throat> that I bought. So yeah, we all have heaters under our desk. So, yeah. you know, it's like, I'm not out in the elements for long, but I put it on. It's pretty warm oh, and that's... I forget what temp it goes down to. And it was 20 bucks and I had gotten rid of my jackets last year. So I'm like, for 20 bucks. Yes, yes. I usually go to Walmart and buy like a whatever jacket because when you put it over here and you hang it up, it smells like food. <laughs> I'm not trying to smell like food my whole entire freaking life. <laughs> so if I have to throw it away, 10 bucks, okay, I'm going to throw it away. I don't care. Yeah. But mine so this was 20. Today. So yeah, so I do have a jacket and uh, it was pretty warm. And okay, then you're I like ready. It. Come on up. And what's so <laughs> and what's so funny is Crystal was there today too, and she bought the same jacket in a different color. Oh, get out of here! That's funny. And because she's going on an Alaskan cruise. <gasps> I've always and wanted to do that. Me, Crystal, me. why don't you invite me? Well, it's their anniversary cruise oh, in no, May. Oh no, I don't want to be so. invited. <laughs> no, <laughs> you don't want to go. Uh, yeah, no, it's an anniversary thing, so it's special. And um, so That's a three's awesome. a crowd, you know that. <laughs> I mean, I could do my own thing. Well, we could go. We can go. You and I can go sometime. It won't be our anniversary, but we'll go. It could be our friendship anniversary. Why not? Well, do you remember the specific date of all that? No, not really. Okay, see there. That's why. (laughs) Back sometime in third grade. Yes. Well, it would have had to been. It would have had to been. And when was I in third grade? Oh my God. We were eight. Eight, eight. I was eight. Two? My birthday's in June. You're in May. So you're going to turn. Was it 82? It had to have been some, something around that time. And then it well, I was had, eight. It's going to be 81-ish. 81-ish. Okay. 81-ish, and then it would have had to have been the beginning of the year. So whatever that yeah. beginning of the, the year was. August. End of August. August. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but go. yeah. So, and she sent me a video of her and it, I'm like, is that that twenty dollar jacket? <laughs> She's oh like, it God, is. That's funny. See? <laughs> so they they picked up a few things for their Alaskan cruise. I'm like, you can't beat Costco, man. I can go in there. Yeah. I usually spend a little bit more than I did, but whatever. I was yeah. I just wanted to get out. I was just like, oh my God. Yes, I don't blame but you. This Not is the horrible. holidays. I wouldn't want to go. I mean, Today I actually instacarted some stuff that I needed for the restaurant because nope, I was no. Gonna- there. I mean, I, they had, you walked in and they had the, the, these cardboard, I don't know what they're called, and they're just one right after another, and you grabbed it, and you went to the register to pay for your spiral ham. Wow. So it's like, if you're picking out your electronics, because it's high end, you just can't walk around with your electronic you pick out. Right. You have to give them the card and all this. So they had that for spiral hams. They had it was just chaos. <laughs> I was just like, oh, why am I here? Oh, that's I'm here. okay. At least you got your jacket. I did. That wasn't planned. That was just like, yeah. what is that? Yeah. <laughs> I like this jacket. I like this jacket. Let me try it on. Oh, it's going to go in the cart. <laughs> so, yeah. So, it was funny to see her. Uh, I'm like, oh, you got my jacket. <laughs> yes. Have fun just on your cruise color. Crystal. Yeah, she will. She will. You know, Have I'm a little jealous. Her. Yeah, same. But it's okay. I, Maybe we could do an all girls thing one time. I well, you know, I don't have enough girls. I, it's just gonna be you and I. That's fine. That's it. What about what about Crystal? Wouldn't go. Crystal or might Danny go. or Danny. Danny would... Danny doesn't do cruise ships. <gasps> she doesn't. Okay, mm-hmm. then it's just you and I then. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay. Uh, you know, Crystal's doing her Alaskan one. I don't know when she'll want to do another one. Right, right. That's true. And okay, I'm okay. I'm gonna go get my passport in January. Just Well you should. We wanted to you wanted to go to Italy, didn't you? I, I do. And um but mine's way expired. I have to start over my passport's way, way expired. 
<laughs> I think mine is expiring next year, so I think I'm going to try to, you know, be ahead of the game. Yeah, so I'm going to make an appointment after the holidays, and I'm going to go get my passport and start the process for doing that stuff because nice very cool cool. yes ma'am so but that's about it yeah same here all right guys thank you for listening to us we appreciate it and uh, we hope that you continue to listen to us um, in future episodes that we have if you guys have any comments or any episodes that you would like to hear please comment them below and um you know, we'll get back to you. Uh, or if you have anything to say, you know, just let us know. Let us know if you like us. Let us know how we're doing. If you do or if you don't or what we can do better or whatever it is that you have on your mind, just let us know. And then um, Shar will tell you where we're at. Oh, I like. Okay, we're on Spotify, Amazon. I made a list. Samsung Podcast. <laughs> Podcast Index. Listen Notes, Apple, Google, Pandora, TuneIn, iHeart, Deezer. There you have it. Look us up. Listen to us right now. Do it. <laughs> Push that button. So Push classy. that subscribe. I know. <laughs> <laughs> it's the Middle Eastern and me. No, I'm just kidding. The Middle Eastern and the one drink and you're just, and yeah. One <laughs> well, you yeah. should be the bossy one. You're the Italian one. Like, come on. Well, I, you, you know, if you use that, you song some of my, yeah, if you ask some of my family and friends down here, they would tell you I am. <laughs> okay. Well, I can there be. You go. I can be. You got to push me just the right way, but I definitely can be. So. All right. Well, listen to us guys and uh, we'll see you next episode. Have a great morning. <laughs> it's morning. It's morning. <laughs> it's always morning. Yeah. <laughs> oh my gosh. No one likes sleep. It's fine. <laughs> Of course not. We're living on the edge. Right? Is that what this is? It is. Living on the edge. Oh, my gosh. All right. Good night, my dear. Good night. Bye. Bye.